going live. You're live. Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to the shop. For those of you joining us live, we are going to be having a good time today. Uh, if you are not joining us live and this is a recording, then uh, we're going to be having some good time. So today we're going to be turning a board into a box. And I have this piece of mahogany and we are going to cut it up and make a box out of a single board. Um, so I'm not sure how long this will take. It's kind of a project I want to leave open. I haven't really come to any particular designs to this. I want it to be designed by the audience. Um, so as we go along, I'll be asking for, hey, should we do it this way or this way? And let you guys see what you want. Um, for those of you who aren't watching live or if watching recorded, I have timestamps down below that will roughly get you to where we're doing each section of the build. So if you want to jump around and see that, uh, then hop down there. Um, also, the thumbnail should be changed with the actual picture of the box, but <laughs> we'll see how that goes in the future. Um, Yes, also we'll be doing a few giveaways. Um, a little later we'll be giving away at least one if not two shirts. And then at the end of the build, we will actually be giving away the box that we're making. So if you are looking forward to that, um, then uh, stay to the end or come back closer to the end and uh, we'll be giving it away. So uh, yeah, this is a piece of Honduras, uh, not Honduras, uh, uh, Filipino mahogany. Um, and I actually can, you can pick it up at Menards, um, surprisingly they carry it, and it's a, it's a pretty good wood. It's a little bit softer, it's relatively easy to work, um, but the grain on it switches, so it doesn't matter which way you're planting, you're always planting against the grain. Um, so it is a little bit more difficult in some ways, but I figured this would make a very good box. Any uh, questions before we really jump in? No. So if you are live and have any questions, throw them in the chat. I will be answering occasionally throughout the build. Um, but uh, if you really want something to be answered or if you want to uh, really influence the way it's designed, um, then you can always do a super chat because we do... Uh, or if you want Sarah to do it instead. <laughs> <laughs> yes. If you really want the board to be messed up, then you can call Sarah over. And what, no response? Oh, there it goes. <laughs> I love you, babe. Okay, so the box we're making is a very small dog house now. <laughs> So the, uh, <laughs> my, my intention is making a box that is square. So I'm going to make a piece out of the end of this that is the same length as it is wide. Um, and we are going to resaw it down so this three quarter inch board will then be cut down into something slightly over a quarter inch for all the sides, which is about right for that size. Um, and then we're going to make the sides out of it a little later. So I'm thinking I'm going to do something about five and a half uh, by about five and a half by about uh, two inches or so tall. Um, as to how it's all joined up, do we want to do dovetails? Um, do we want to do uh, rabbits? Do we want to do miters? Um, how do we want the lid to go in? Do we want it to be hinged? Do we want it to be sliding? Do we want it to just be a set hinge, a uh, set lid? Do we want to make the, the base inset? Do we want to make it grooved? These are a lot of things I want you guys to uh, decide what you want to see, and we'll be working on that. And yeah, and I am planning on putting some carving into this as well. So, uh, yes. Um, so, first thing we need to do is actually lay out on the board where we're going to be putting all of our marks. Uh, so, I'm going to decide that the box will be five and a half by five and a half, but I want you guys to tell me how tall do you want it to be. Do you want it to be something really short, like a pencil box, um, or do you want it to be as tall as I can make it? Um, I could make it all an actual cube, five and a half by five and a half by five and a half. Um, or I could make the sides half height of the box, which I think is a little more aesthetic. Um, but uh, let me know what you want to do. So we're going to switch over to this camera. And, ooh, it's focused there. That's better. Um, and I want to lay out the board to be the proper length as it is wide. So this board is a half. So I'm going to put in a mark here at that point. And now we can square that off to this side over here. And now I know that this is my reference edge here. So I'm actually going to go ahead and mark that. Let me find my pencil. So the only thing, okay, two things that have been thrown out. What's is that? Is mitered houndstooth dovetails. <laughs> <laughs> and a fancy. Did you ever finish the marking knife giveaway? Yes. Yeah, that was. Oh, that was a. I don't actually make videos about, here's the winners of the marking knife because no one really wants to see a video where two people win and a thousand people don't, so. Um, There's your answer. Yeah. 
So I'm going to start by marking this one here, and that's how far I need to resaw this down. So I've got a line here. This will then become the top and bottom because I'm going to resaw it. And then this will become the sides, or I may end up doing another panel for sides. Um, so how tall do we want this box to be? Do we want it to be half the height, uh, half the size of it, or do we want to make it a full cube? Uh, let me know that down below. Next thing we want to do is actually start resawing this. Has anyone been uh, talking about that? No. Um, and so for that, I need to make a mark into the edge of the board. And I'm going to stick this pin into about what I think is center-ish. Slide the fence up and I'm mark surprised it. no one's asked for the dimensions of a pencil box case yet, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> we mark from one side and mark from the other. And that's going to give us two parallel lines. Let me zoom in and show you this a little better. Focus. There we go. And so this will give us two lines. So if our board has a slight variance of thickness, this will let us know where the center of it is. So let's start back here. Mark that way. And this line, this side. So that is slightly thinner than the saw curve we'll be using. So I'm just going to keep the saw down the center of it. Do this on this Ooh, side. Ooh, we got one super chat. What's that? So Randy Bowes wants dovetail with slid in lid and half height. Slid in lid and what? Half height. Half height, okay. Then I've had a couple cubes with dovetails. Now I had a lot of people talking ahead of time that they wanted to see dovetails and I had a lot of people saying that they want to do miters because the people don't see mitered boxes quite as much. A coffin shaped box. <laughs> That's for James. <laughs> he should be a dead man by now. So there, we're going to resaw this right down the middle and I'm going to cut it down to this point because that will then give us uh, four sides, half height. Uh, let me make sure, make sure I am the right Oh, we had a super chat and I didn't do a mom joke. <gasps> I'm so sorry, Randy. Huh. Oh, I marked that wrong. He's Let's in his own little world right. now, guys. We're not sorry. Gonna... Let's mark this. He has this. one shoe box down right now. <laughs> Actually, I'm going to mark this a bit bigger, give us some leeway. I'm going to go ahead and mark it at six because I'd rather have extra. Okay. Than not have enough. What's that? So six was scared of seven because seven, eight, nine. But why did seven eat nine? Why? Because you're supposed to eat three squared meals a day. Huh. <laughs> that sounds like what Arthur would say. I know. <laughs> so there, now we need to resaw this board and I'm going to put it into my vise at a slight angle away from me. And we're going to grab out Bertha. All right. Well, before you grab Bertha. What's that? Uh, I'm going to presume it's supposed to actually pronounce Bout Murman, something like that. Um, will resawing give a continuous grain all around? Um, no. No. Uh, if I wanted to have continuous grain going around all the sides, then I would have to make them sequentially out of the board. So I'd have to make it longer. Um, and so if I want them to be thinner, like the resaw at work, um, I would have to make it four sections long and then make sure that those are all sequential. Uh, for grain like this, um, especially if we're planning on doing dovetails, um, sequential grain really doesn't matter because you won't see it as it wraps around dovetails. Now, if you're doing mitered, then you could do that, but that would be a lot more work. Not all right. There. So IDK super chatted and said back taller than the front. Back taller than the front. Oh, so you want an angled top. I don't think we have time to do that one today. But. Should I create fun. a list of all these ideas? I could actually make it hinged and have that. Uh, but then the top would have to be larger than the bottom. Let me think that one through. All right, you ready? I'm ready. I have another mom joke. Okay. What starts with O and ends with yins and sometimes makes you cry? What? Opinions. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, so what I'm doing with this is I'm really cranking it down nice and tight. 
and then I'm going to eyeball down the blade and I want to make sure that this blade isn't twisted so I'm actually just going to eyeball down it and make sure that it's nice and straight um, some people will put the saw on its side and then put in uh, put on winding sticks on it to see if there's any twist in the blade I'm not that picky but if I was doing something like uh, um, uh, veneer cutting I probably would I'm going to set it right on that line pick up the saw and I'm going to give it one swift push and it went right off not bad just not quite where I want it to be there we go I'm trying to cut down the side I can see and then I'm going to cut down the side I can't see making sure I'm still on track I'll set the I? camera so you can see this a little Am I closer. supposed to be saving these questions? What's that? Am I supposed to be saving these no, questions? No, not today. Okay, good. Um, there are going to be too many questions to actually fit in. They can only fit so many in. So, Dennis, to answer your question about electric, we got it Wednesday night around 7 p.m.? Yes, we were only out for 53, uh, 51 hours. So, so yay. Making sure I'm online. Okay, so now I've cut from this corner back to somewhere around here. Pull this out. I'm going to bash the ceiling in. And now I'm going to turn it around. And that way I'm always looking at the line on my side of the board and I'm not worrying about the line on the other side. So I can go into it again. Set in the kerf. Love the first few cuts. You really get fast down in there. Gonna let the saw do the work. I'm not pushing the saw, I'm just moving it back and forth. Once we're down a little ways, turn around and this board just cuts like butter. So, um, Christopher Lawrence wanted to know is this saw more efficient than a normal hand saw? Um, yes, because you can use your whole body on it and so it allows you to get more into it. Whereas if you're doing it the normal hand saw, I mean, you can, and I, I have shown quite a few videos where. You can grab a normal handsaw. So what about someone with my ability? What? What about someone with my ability or lack of? That would be easier because you can use both hands and really get a lot of um, whole body motion into it. So you're actually spending less effort. Right now I'm moving the saw with my arm. Whereas with that I can use my whole body. So with this, Also, this is only 26 inches, whereas this is 36 inches. And I'm going to hit my camera. Move that one back. I'll switch back over to that one a moment. And so what I want to do here is I want to actually eh, not hit the cable. Pull you over. The fun of having cables in the house. I want to actually run it with my whole body. So you can see I can get my whole body in here. And I'm not putting any force on it. You can see I let go of the handle. Where's my cup? Probably a little bit farther than I should have, but this is cutting really quickly. And we go on this side. So, what? I'm I'm sorry if I'm skipping around on some questions. I'm trying to do the ones that are with the project right this second. Um, 
adjust this over a little bit. What you got? So, so I think we're having a lot of questions with just a frame saw. I don't think some people have seen frame saws. Okay. Um, so in your, they want to know, in your opinion, how hard is it to figure out the mechanics? The mechanics? I don't I know what you're saying. how you... It, it's really self-explanatory in that it's just a saw. <laughs> okay, hang on. I think I know what they want to know. Okay, come here. Here. Go under that cable. Limbo, limbo. I don't need to limbo. <laughs> <laughs> so, newbie. All right, this is going to be a lot harder for you because it's way up there. So actually, let me, let me grab the saw and move it down a bit for you. There. So you want to keep the saw parallel to the top? Saw okay. to the saw. What's that? We're saw squared. Um, step forward with one foot. I don't get anything with that joke. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so you're all the way back, so you actually want yes. to step forward a little bit farther. You want your you want your body underneath it when you're back. And okay. then push it forward and extend your arms. <laughs> now what, here's, the, here's the thing. But now. I want to scoop back. Right now what happens is the saw is tipping down. Yeah. And so that's putting your force down into the wood. Okay. So you actually want to let the saw do the work rather than forcing it down to the wood. You want to actually... Yeah. So you need less pressure than you think you yes, need. Yes, yeah. The more pressure you put into it, the more your cut is going to go all over the place. And I'm sure anyone taller than 4 foot 10 would have a slightly easier time of this. Now you're using your arms a lot if you can... And that, that's where I, my, my, benefit, my benefit is I can put my body weight into it and so I can move it all with the force of my legs. My whereas she's way down here, so it'd be like me so cutting. Wow, that'd be fun. But I mean, I, I feel like I'm not using a lot of force considering. Yeah. Not like. Considering you're cutting through about eight inches of wood. I hope this is helping you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're at depth. My? A little more. One more. One big one. One big <laughs> Got it? Yeah. I don't want to drop it. I let you through before I start running into you. Oh, true <laughs> love right there. And so now we've cut through <laughs> and basically we've cut at an angle like that. Now I'm going to set the board up vertically so I can cut straight down. This is going to take more force um, because I'm cutting into the grain as opposed to cutting across the grain. But we'll get it done. There. So for time space continuum, James makes it look a lot easier and a lot faster. <laughs> <laughs> and then when you're done, always take the pressure off of the saw. That way you're not always under but pressure. In my opinion, for resawing, that is way easier because <laughs> I have tried resawing with a hand saw and it's yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, it takes because you're spreading the workload out over your whole body. It takes less effort, and you can do that a lot longer than you can do this until you've built up the stamina in that one arm. And it's not about the force and the strength. It's about the stamina. Um, I, you don't need force to push the saw. You need the stamina to just keep it going. Well, a little force helps, too. Well, yes. You need the minimum amount to keep it going. So. Yeah, well, it says the six foot one man compared to the four foot ten woman. <laughs> I'm gonna change this up a little bit. Uh oh. Cause. Cause Sarah doesn't. That straight was there. <laughs> no. Uh, well, what happened? You know, let me, this would be a good learning experience. Right off the bat, on that first push. The one I pushed too hard. No, no, on mine. Oh, okay. Um, it's I still kind of fuzzy. Here, let me do this. No, I need my hand here. I was gonna say it's to focus on something. There we go. So on this first cut, you can see this niche down below. And I that push, I pushed a little bit too wild. I lifted up and it bounced over. So I can't use this piece for the top. 
but that's not a problem because if I'm going to make it half width, I can use the two pieces over here and two pieces over here as long as I move it back a little bit. So this score mark that I made on there earlier, I'm just going to move that mark over a little bit farther. It's not a problem because I'm going to be planing it down and smoothing it a little later. But, uh, yeah. So Ronald De La Vega wants to know, De La Vega, I'm sorry. Um, does the set of the sawtooth affect the speed of the saw cut? It took me nine minutes to rip a 15 inch hardwood. Um, yes, a little bit. The bigger the set, the more wood you're removing, therefore the more work it requires. However, it is not that much um, because you're, you're talking of you know, a few hundredths of an inch of difference. Um, so it's not going to be a significant difference, but after you've been doing it for a while, it'll be something that you notice slightly. Um, if it's taking you that long, either your cut is really binding up and you're having to put a lot of work into it, um, or your body mechanic is off, or your saw just isn't sharp. And usually it's the saw just isn't sharp. So, so Dennis Haynes wants to know, did you purposely buy a board that needs resawing or could we just buy a thinner board? Yeah, you can less, buy a thinner board. Is it less expensive to resaw it or? Yeah, it, um, getting the larger the piece you get, usually the better the board feet price. But is it worth the effort time-wise? Um, well, I mean, you saw that. That was like five minutes worth of work. Um, you know, it probably took me 15 minutes because I'm talking and showing Sarah and things like that. But I mean, really, it, it's five minutes worth of work. That's so not a significant amount. All right. Um, so I'm marking this out so that these boards are, let me make sure it's five and a half. Yeah, five and a half by five and a half. And then we're going to cut these off. So Matthew Bunton, I probably said that wrong, wants to know, do you ever wish you built a 48 inch saw instead of a 36 inch? Um, occasionally. The, the problem with the 48 inch saw is you don't have that much body movement if you're doing stuff under a foot. Um, because you have to move your entire body and arms 48 inches to get that. And so with a 48 inch saw, most things that I cut are less than a foot wide. And with a 48 inch saw, I'm not using the whole saw. It's just more weight, it's more mass, and that makes it a little more difficult. Now if I'm cutting something greater than 12 inches, then having that longer saw isn't as much of a problem, it is a good thing because I'll have the same amount of movement because the saw can't move quite as far, there's a board in the middle of it. Um, and so if I were doing a lot of larger stuff, then yes, I would like to get the 48 inch saw. But for how little I get do larger things, this is far more enjoyable for most of the work I do because it's smaller, it's lighter, it's easier to work. So. I'm just imagining a 48 inch saw compared to me. <laughs> That's a 10 inch difference. <laughs> so I'm going to mark, I'm going to cut all the way around this board. So now we have a vote for a half height box with an inset lid. I think we've had one similar to that, didn't we? In life, I don't know. James is still going to do what he wants to do, but anyway. No, I think, well, or we had a super chat for a dovetail lid. With slide uh, dovetailed ends. sides with a slide in lid. Yes. And so I think that's what I'm leaning towards so far. Because, you know, super chat, that's... that's well, and then the other super chat was back taller than the front. But maybe yes. that could be another video idea. It would make a good little video to do an angle. And so I'm going to cut all the way around this, what? making sure to follow my reference side. So I'm going to totally butcher the name, so I'm just going to ask the question. I'm sorry. What is the cost of the 32 inch frame saw? I honestly can't remember because I bought that four well, years ago. I got mine from Blackburn Toolworks. You can so look it up online. Okay, um, here we go. Blackburn. Blackburn Toolworks. Kind of an odd website. It's not easy to get around. Um, but he sells the kits. He sells them in a 24 inch, a 36, and a 48, if I remember correctly. Actually, we're going to do this with a bench hook because I have a lot of people like, oh, you never use a bench hook. I'm like, ah, oh, where did my bench hook go? I never use a bench hook because my bench hook disappeared. So, according to his website, huh. if you want a 32 inch blade unsharpened, it's 114 US dollars. Sharpened, it's 155. So, there you go, folks. 
and then prices go up from there. <laughs> okay. So now I'm going to grab my carcass saw, about uh, 13 inch rip cut teeth. And let's switch over to this one, except for, whoa, we're out of focus. There we go. So let's cut this down. And I'm going to cut right on the line. And then I'm going to cut down the side that I can see. And I'm going to connect the dots from this corner to this corner so that I'm only cutting on the side that I can see. Now we can flip the board over and repeat the process. And this way I'm only cutting on the side that I can see. I get a nice clean line. I can stay tight on it. Cutting down this side. Now we cut off the corners. So Brian Fulmer wants to know, did you say that that has ripped teeth, your saw? Yeah, the, the frame saw, it has ripped teeth, yes. Because you're cutting with the grain, you want to rip. <coughs> okay, now we're going to do the same thing on this one. We'll make sure I stay on the opposite side of the line. Cutting on the right side of the line is a pain. viewers are currently live? 100. What's that? 100. Ooh, I think we should do a giveaway. Um, we need to do a giveaway. So I'm going to be giving away uh, one of these shirts. So if you haven't seen these, these are the Wood by Right Venn diagram because you have dad jokes and woodworking. Mix them all together and you have Wood by Right. Um, and then it has, oop, this side, happy little wood curls on the uh, sleeve. Um, those are available on my website, but let's give one away. What should we give as a trivia for that? Uh, oh, we're doing trivia? What would be our trivia question? Hmm. Does it need to be woodworking related? Nope. Ah, I got a good one. Okay. What country did Sarah spend a, summer, a whole year of her life in, other than the U.S.? First person that gets the right country wins a shirt. Size. So let me actually show you what the saw curve on the inside of this looks like. Focus. So my resawing, that is the side with the saw curve. This is the, the fresh side. So that is the finish I get off of that frame saw. You know what's funny? What is funny? For your trivia question, I actually mentioned it in the chat earlier today. Did you? Yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> because I was talking about pronouncing somebody's name, and I said, because I was in South Africa for a year and learned off for cons. So I who got figured it? That was, so the first one that came across in Pennsylvania, <laughs> we did live there, <laughs> yes. um, was Matthew, I'm going to butcher it again, Bunton, B-U-N-T-Y-N. Cool. That's the first that came across our screen. So. Well, uh, Matthew, um, if you can get me your address and your shirt size, I will get one out to you. Just send me an email with that. And uh, congratulations. We'll probably do another one a little later. Probably give away. You know, but yes, Site shirts. Africa, East now London. I have, I have about uh, halfway through my inventory of shirts. So if you do want them, uh, they are available. But this is when I sell out of them, I'm out of them. So. So there is our top and bottom, at least for right now. Oh, it is bunting. Awesome. 
Now we want to make our sides. So I have to figure out how, um, how long I want these sides to be. Now we have to think about the actual, um, the actual function of the box. So if we're going to make these dovetailed, switch back over to this one. If we're going to make these dovetailed and we want to make the top a sliding lid, then that means <coughs> I need to cough. <laughs> that means that our box, our sides, are going to have to be longer than our top and bottom because we want to house these in. So the bottom plate will get housed into a groove in the sides and the top plate will then have a groove that it slides in and out of. So in order to do that, let um, me just think through this, our sides need to be um, the thickness of our board, so this thickness twice this thickness longer, well it would, be, it would have to be two-thirds of twice this thickness longer. So if, let's just do this, two thicknesses of this are 0.98, uh, 0.69, wow that was bad, uh, so let's say 0.7. Uh, so two-thirds of 0.7 is um, oh come on, so that'd be 4.3 or 0.43 no 2, yeah 4, 6, 0.46 so I need to make this this needs to be 0.46 longer than these. So let's just round it up and make it a half inch longer than these. That makes this easier because then these are now six inches long because they're five and a half. I hope that made sense. It probably did not. So let's make a mark here. Six inches. And we're going to mark all the way around this at six inches. On that side. Oh. At this point, I don't want to keep the square like this. I want to rotate it back around because I originally referenced this edge. I want to keep referencing that edge. I'm going to get the knife in there. <laughs> and then we can roll it up one more time. Make a mark here. And I love it when these lines match up perfectly like that. Um, unfortunately, my resaw mark, my resaw didn't go, didn't go down all the way, so I need to make it just a little bit longer. So rather than shortening up my vise, I'm going to put it in here, and I'm going to grab my handsaw and just take it down a little bit further. Ooh. My handsaw is ever so slightly thicker than my frame saw. Depth, just a little more. Make sure we're good. There, we're good. So now we can cut this off at that measurement. Any questions right now? Um, I'm sure we do. I'm sure I skipped some. So I'm gonna <laughs> go back up and see. I don't know if design and make is still on. This question had been asked a couple times. What's that? They would like any advice for growing a smaller channel. Love your channel a lot. Um, oh, growing YouTube channels is an art. It is very, very hard to do. Usually, collaborations are the lifeblood of getting a channel up and going. And if you can find a channel that is willing to collaborate with you, usually the way you do that is you offer to do work for the other channel. Um, so if a small channel comes to me with an interesting idea for a build or something like that, and they do a decent chunk of the work and send it to me to do the finishing or the other step on it, 
uh, it makes it very easy for me to say, yeah, that saves me time. It gives me content to put out. And it makes it good for you because then you get me saying, yeah, if you want to see how this was put together in the beginning, go over and check out this channel. Um, another thing that a lot of people do is they'll actually create an entire video for another channel. Um, so if, if someone built a video that fit my style, that was well produced, and fit the way I like to teach things and create an entire video that was that way, then I might end up putting that video on my channel. Um, that saves me time, that I, mean, I don't have to produce a whole video, so if for some reason I'm on vacation or something, it's, I can have a guest who comes in and does the video for me. Um, and I, I like that. Um, and then it helps out the other person because then they get the content of people sending to it. So those are, those are the two best ways I can tell people to grow a channel. But it's a lot of work, and anyone who tells you otherwise is lying. Yes, it is a lot of work. It is a job. James treats it like a job. <laughs> but whatever you do, don't, don't put links to your videos everywhere. Um, that doesn't work, and it just annoys people. Um, I, I don't even put links to all of my videos on my own Facebook page. Um, I, I don't, I only actually advertise about half my videos because number one, it's not beneficial and number two, it just annoys people. Um, if there's something fun that I'm showing off or something that the audience uh, would think is interesting, then maybe, but other than that, I don't mess with it too much. Okay, so we've got our top and bottom and we've got our sides. Um, if we're going to be doing a sliding lid, now we need to think about uh, there. So actually, you just think through order of operations. Order of operations is incredibly important um, in any project you do. And being able to think through those step by step and how do you do it is incredibly important. So one of the things I'm going to need to do to this is I need to plane off the side that's rough. And it would be easier to clamp it down and plane them all now to get them all to the same thickness. Um, but I could also cut these in half because I need to make this into two sides and make this into two sides. Um, and it would be easier to cut them before planing them down, but it would be more easier <laughs> um, to plane them all first. So as much as I want to cut these in half now, I'm actually going to go ahead and plane all four of these down to the same thickness. So we're going to put that in here in my vise. I'm going to grab some dogs. Actually, I'm going to grab some bench pups. Bench pups are the smaller dogs, and I use these probably more than I use regular dogs um, just because they're, they're small and efficient. And for little things like this, they work out well. So I can push those down in here so that they're not sticking out much. If I push it down too far. So, would those be the Sarah size version? Yes, <laughs> Sarah dogs. Um. <laughs> what? So, Vishwa wants to know what kind of joints are you going to work on? What's that? What kind of joints are you going to do for this project? Um, as of right now, the uh, super chat said do dovetails, so we'll be doing dovetails. Although I might, uh -oh. I might do a mitered dovetail. I have to think about that. Mitered dovetail is going to take a little longer. I think I'll see where I'm at on time. 9.40. Um, we'll see. So Woodwork Learner wants to know, how flat would you get the inside of the box? How flat? Just reading the question. As flat as it needs to be. And you can see here, I'm actually going to be using a number four because there's no reason to use anything longer than this to flatten it out. And I'll start on one side. I'm going to go across to the other. And this one is a pain because I'm going with the grain here, I'm going against the grain here, and I'm going with the grain here. So I'm going to try and turn it around and see if that changes anything. So we have consensus so far about mitered dovetails. What? They want mitered dovetails. They want mitered dovetails. They want mitered, mitered, 
it's dubbed. And if they super chat, maybe Sarah has to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Mitered dovetails, not slaughtered dovetails. <gasps> Did you if, hear that, folks? If I really want to check it. As executive producer of this channel. Three, two, <laughs> three, two, three, one, three, two. I'll take it. So I want to take all the rest of these down to 3, 2. Um, point 3, 2. Actually, I think my number 5 is sharp. This will take off a lot more material far faster. So how much are you trying to take off? I don't know yet. I'm going okay. to take it all so, down to 0.32 inches. Oh, so you're doing it too. Uh, yeah, this one good. was the one I had to take off the most material, so I'm going to take it down to that one. So this is currently at 0 0.34, 0 0.32, 0 0.34, 0 0.35. Wow. So I need to take off a lot of material in this corner and none at all in this corner and a little bit here to here. So I'm just going to think about that. If I need to take a lot off from this this corner here, I'm just going to focus on that Well, corner. if you could plane correctly, then maybe you wouldn't. <laughs> Oop, I got a chip in there. I'm going to turn this around. Let's see. Let's see how close that gets us. So Jason Miner wants to know, three, after three, re sawing and planing three, both rough sides, how big of a kerf was removed from the original board size? Um, my saw kerf is uh, just about a sixteenth of an inch. Actually, you know, it's a little less than a sixteenth of an inch. Oop. Keep landing on curls. Okay, now we're going to come in and smooth this. There we go. So let's see how close we are on that. Three, two. Eh, you're still a little thick. Oh, no, three, two. Never mind. I was just on a curl. Three, two. Eh, a little thin, but perfect. Within tolerances. So these, these are the sides. So you can see how they're slightly longer than they are wide. And then these are the top and bottom. Now I'm going to wait on these because I want these to be thicknessed to whatever the plane, uh, the iron that I'm going to be using to groove the, the groove, the groove, to cut the groove. There's the word. Oh, I was on the wrong camera. That's why. Sure, yeah. These two are for the sides, so you can see how they are longer than they are wide. But I'm going to wait on doing the top and bottom and make them to the exact thickness of the groove that we have later. So we're going to set these aside. We'll work on them later. And now let's work on these. So I need to cut these. Just stab myself. We've got an argument going on upstairs. I hear that. I don't know if you guys can hear that. Um, so I want to actually find out where we're halfway on these. They're five and a half. So let's put okay. it at. I'm going to go address that real quick. Two and. No. Two and three quarter. So theoretically, two and three, I wish we were in the metric system. This stuff is trash. So let's put this pin into there, slide this up, lock it down. And now we're going to turn around and make sure that we're slightly off, but we're within. So it's not dead on the center. Actually, zoom in and show you that a little closer. So I'm hoping you guys can see this. We have two marks on here. So if I mark from this side, we get one line. And then if I turn it around and I mark from this side, we'll get a second line just a little ways away from it. And so those two lines 
are ever so slightly apart, but that's okay because that's actually about the thickness of my saw curve. So we're just going to put those two lines on there. Because this is so thin, there's no reason to go all the way around it. Do the same thing on this one. Woo! My gauge moved. I didn't tighten it down enough. So we're going to put it back into this line. Did you break the rules of engagement? Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> tighten it down a little more. Now, make that line, turn it around. Wrong camera, they're line. saying. Are you trying to be on the close camera? Ah, oh, shoot. Yes. There. You can see how those two lines are ever so slightly apart. Um, and that will make it so that I have basically marked the saw curve, which is kind of nice. But if the two lines match up perfectly, like when I readjust it, these two lines basically matched up perfectly and I have a single line. Now I just have to remind myself, split the difference in this one and the other one go in between them. So now we're going to be cutting with the grain. And because it's such a small cut, I could use my carcass saw, but I'm going to do it the correct way. I'm going to grab my tenon saw, which has rip cut teeth. And I'm going to put it on here and have it overhang the side of the bench. Actually, do I have... I wish I knew where my bench hook went, because that would be a good one to show in here. Well, what do you mean where your bench hook went? Where did you put it? I don't know where my bench hook went. I don't use it enough, so it doesn't really matter. It's not on yeah. the other side? Hmm. I don't know. <coughs> Excuse me. So now we got that on there. I'm going to start cutting on the far edge. I'm going to slowly lower the heel down and follow that line across the board. Now I have an established cut all the way across. Just go to town, cut straight down. And theoretically, these two pieces should be precisely the same height. And... That is well within tolerances. That is oh, yes. a These shaving or so away. Sorry. That's it's grainy. I don't know what's going on with that camera. There. So let's do the same thing with this one. Got any questions? Uh, let's see. IDK wanted to know, do you ever use stabilized wood? Yeah, yeah, I use it quite a bit. Um, I actually have a couple videos on how to stabilize wood, if you want to see that. Um, I, if the wood is punky, I definitely stabilize it as long as it fits in my vacuum chamber. If I'm doing it something that's like clamped against metal, such as a uh, knife scale, then stabilization is fantastic for that. But for something like this where it's just going to be against wood, the wood itself is okay. It really doesn't need to be stabilized. Establish cut. Now the real question is, these two match each other, do these match these? Except for I've got that sticking up. So that is acceptable. I've got one of them that's sticking up. The tallest one at this end is 30 second higher than the other ones. But at this end, they are all right there. So that is, there's good. So there's the sides of our box. That'll be the height of the box. Next thing we need to do is cut the grooves. Oh, actually, let's, let's talk about order of operations again. Order of operations constantly comes up. Um, I could cut the grooves on these and then cut the dovetails. Or I could cut the dovetails and then cut the grooves. Because I'm going to have through grooves on them, I actually want to do the grooves first because then they can use those to help lay out the dovetails. Um, so we're going to do grooves first. We're going to get groovy with it. But before we do that, I actually want to label all of these and find out which side goes up, which side goes down. Because none of these will have continuous grain, but I do want to kind of match them up a little bit. 
and these actually match up pretty well. Let's do it like that. So I'm going to mark on the inside of the box, and I'm going to put an arrow down. So on the inside of the box, I'm going to go arrow down, arrow down, arrow down, arrow down. And then I'm going to mark on these um, what they are. So it doesn't really matter. We're going to do front. We're going to do, so if that's front, then this is right. This is back. And this is left. So FRBL. And that is our box. It should be something like that. Hey, we're all done. Thank you for coming today. We've had, uh, oh, you want me to finish this thing? <laughs> Sorry, that was a bad one. OK, um, we need to cut grooves in this. Um, and what we're going to do is we are going to cut a groove in the top inside and the bottom inside all the way around this. So each of these will get two grooves. And so I'm going to find an iron that is slightly thinner than this. And I'm going to use my Stanley 45 and or 55. Any questions while I'm setting this up? No. And let's find an iron that works. And I've got a few of them to choose from. Um, let's see, how are you? Oh, Amir Muhammad asked, is that considered a hardwood or a softwood? Uh, it is a hardwood. Um, any deciduous tree is a hardwood, um, though it is a very soft hardwood. Yeah, that looks to be the one. This one is so you're gonna a little use less than a sixteenth of an inch. Instead of a grooving plane? What's that? You're going to use that instead yes, of a plane? Yes, and the nice plane. thing about that is I can pick exactly the blade I want to use that matches the work I want to do. Whereas I have grooving planes that are set up. Like uh, last time we did a live, we made a standard quarter by quarter by quarter grooving plane. And I could use this to do that, but then I'd have to plane these down to quarter inch. Um, and I want to keep them a little bit thicker. Um, well, I could. No, let's show off the 45. I like the 45. Nice thing about the 45 and or 55 is you have this whole selection of irons, and so I can find an iron that's covered in dust. Uh, I can find an iron that is close to what I want to cut. So let's actually go through setting up a 55. And I'm going to use my 55 because it's a little less temperamental than my 45. My 45 is, it's feminine. What? What? Mm -hmm. What? I didn't say anything. <laughs> Keep digging. I said the next live is going to be a shovel handle. <laughs> so let's open this up. I'm going to take it all apart. Take the fence off. And then, here, zoom in a little closer so you guys can see. Now I'm going to take off. These. I don't normally use a wrench, but when it's been sitting for a while, they get kind of tight. I'm going to take off the second skate, and now we can take off. So wait, wait, uh, back up. Why, why, would, why did you call this plain feminine? The the 55 works really well. The 45 is very temperamental. That's the feminine one. You just are trying to save yourself now. <laughs> That's what I said. <laughs> it's temperamental. <laughs> And we're going to run the iron forward <coughs> until it's sticking out. Oh, I've got, I've got to pull my uh, spur back. It's sticking out a bit too far. Where did my screwdriver go? There it is. I need a small screwdriver to stick in here, and I'm going to loosen up the spur on this. So what is the spur. Just hang I'll show you. So we've got, let's get right in here on it. The spur is this tiny little blade that sticks out. And it was sticking out farther because I was doing some cross grain work. 
So this time I'm going to push it back in because I don't want it sticking out. And then we can tighten this down. Just like that. And now I'm going to push the iron forward um, until it just barely sticks out the, the side, which I'm going to eyeball. Like that. Now that it is down, make sure we're still there. Knocked it out. Back on, back on, back on. Sorry. Give me just a moment here. That's a beautiful view of the bench. I know it is. What a gorgeous bench. There. Now it's down all the way. Now we can tighten this down in. And this will suck the iron tight up against the, the side here. So I can crank that down. Now our iron is set to depth. Now we can put in our second skate, which is currently stuck to a magnet. Back up a little bit for this. So we can slide in the second skate, put it on there. And I don't want it to be perfectly flush to the outside. I want it to be in just a little bit. I want to make sure that it as well is at the same height. It is. So now I can tighten down this nut onto the rail and this one onto the rail. Give them a bit of a tweak. And now we can put on our fence. And for this one, why are we jammed? There we go. I, I want to set the fence away from the iron however far I want that groove in. And I could get very, very picky and put it at a specific depth, but it really doesn't matter at all. So I'm going to put it in somewhere around there. And I'm going to tighten it down. And with this 55, I am really, really certain that that fence is perfectly parallel with the skate, or at least close enough that it will, won't cause any problem. And so this should be ready to go. But I'm not going to test it on my work. I'm going to test it on some other scrap because I've had a bad experience. I've got to back this up. Now. So, Versanat wants to know: Should the front panel be cut lower to allow room for the top to slide? Um, we are going to do that later. So we're actually going to cut the groove all the way around, and then that groove will become the mark that we can cut off that front lip. Then we'll take that front lip off and glue it on to the uh, the top. So it'll fit in there. So now we've got that in. Now we can give this a try. Cutting a bit heavy, but that's not a problem because this actually will cut really well. So now we want to set it to, actually I'm going to back it up a little bit. It's a little bit too heavy. You can hear that loud noise when it's ripping through there. That means that it's just it's digging in. I'm just going to back it off a little bit. Ah, see that sounds better. Now it's still a little light though. Now let's push it forward just a little bit. Right there. There we go. That's better. Good clean cuts. Now I need to set a depth. So I'm going to take this down, and I want to put that depth in about a half the thickness of this board. Why a half? Because that's just generally the rule of thumb. I made there enough space for a third of it, so we will have a sixth of leeway for expansion and contraction of the boards. And so that looks like about half. Let's find out. This is what? So this should be something else. Don't need to go a little deeper. I'm going to take it down to one five. Having a good set of calipers is a great thing to have in the shop. One five, that's where we want. So now that we have this set to depth, I can put this in here, I can loosen up, it's gotten tight, drop tools on the floor, loosen up my skate, 
<coughs> excuse me, my depth, adju depth adjuster, and I can run that down and push it just a little bit tight. Lock this in place. And now I shouldn't get any cut here. No, I still got a cut. So it means I want to actually run this down a little bit more. Just like that. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. So now this is completely set up and ready to go. Now we can cut our grooves. What questions we got? Um, let's see. Off topic, but any advice on making a bow tie for the first time? Um, you know, that's actually a video. I, want, I, have, I have a couple of videos on making bow ties, cutting them by hand. Um, but I, want, I have a, a process coming up that I want to show off. Um, we'll be doing that here soon. Um, I don't yet have that. Um, it's really just take it slow. Don't take off more material than you need to. And uh, have fun. <laughs> no, it's, it's really about staying away from your line as long as humanly possible. Make it as, um, make that line just incredibly valuable to you. Don't get anywhere near it. Switch over to this one. Don't get anywhere near the line. And it will treat you much better. So what I'm doing here is I'm finding I'm making one edge that's perfectly flat, and I set these on the bench top, and that is going to make all of them at the same spot. I'm going to pinch them all together, because I want to make these all the exact same height. I pinch them all together, bring them over here into the vise, and lock them down. Now I know that the bottom edge of all of these is perfectly flush, but a couple of these are just sticking up a little bit higher in some spots. So I'm going to come over here, and we're going to plane them down. Like this middle one is high right here and this outside one's high right there. And there we go. One more. There we go. Nice clean cut. And now I know that this is perfectly flush and this is perfectly flush, but the one thing I don't know is, is there any slant to this? So I can take one of them out, I can rotate it around, set them on the bench, and I can see does that match up. And that's perfect. Let's so actually take one more out, rotate it around, put it on the other side, knock them all over. That is perfect. I love that. Now I know that these are all exactly the same thickness all the way across. Now we can start putting the grooves in here. So I can clamp them out here on the edge and run my groove in. Here we go. Get my vise out of the way. And now we can go to town. What questions we got? Uh, let's see. His Mercy 44 asks, I know you can split a log, but does it make sense to resaw a log? Um, it's short. I have twisty hard dogwood. To resaw, yeah. I mean, that's what that's what sawing is. Is just uh, milling the board and cutting it down. Um, that's you. You actually get far more material out of the board if you saw it rather than rive it. So in most cases, it's actually better to saw it than to rive it. But riving it will give you uh, more stable lumber. <laughs> so it's one of those things that eh, depends. So here we got this. Let me switch back over to these. So there we have one groove in there. Now we have to cut um, seven more. So let's get to that. I want to do one. What's that? I want to do one. You want to do one? I want to do one. Come on over. Yeah, that's a good one. Okay, so let's make sure this is ready. I get the chip out of there. There you go. All right. So, right hand here, left hand on this. Okay, that's heavier than it looks. Yeah, it is. <laughs> There's a reason it's called the king of hand plants. I'm gonna this oop, slide in my But you said it's feminine, so shouldn't it be? No, the, the 45 is feminine. The 45 is the temperamental. Is. This is the one that's not temperamental. You just said this was feminine because it wasn't temperamental. No, this one's temperamental, 
So it's feminine, but it's also lighter. I love you. What are you looking at me like that for? <laughs> so, all right. Set the the front of the sled on the wood. Kay. Keep push the fence up against the work. Yep, got it. Here, for you, actually, why don't you grab it like this? What am I grabbing? So you can grab. So the I can actually push it across. Yes. Okay, ready? Yep. Now what, what uh -oh. happened here? Uh oh. What happened here is you got to the end, and you're pushing this way, and the, the, it was going. I was out pushing like this. which way? You're pushing that way. Gotcha. So it was starting to tip out this way. So you're you're I holding. I need to put more force. Well, no, you're you're putting oh. pressure here, but as you got out to the end past here, now the pressure is pushing on this. Gotcha. So here. See, this is to show everybody <laughs> how someone who hasn't been doing woodworking for how many years. These are all the mistakes that are easy to make. There you go. Okay, so wait, hang on, like that? Yep. Just like that. Just, Just about like 10, 15 times. And as you get it down, it will hold itself in pretty well. Now is it normal? Because I feel like this is not. You're, you're not. You're not putting any okay. pressure. What you're actually doing is at the beginning here, you're lifting up. Okay. And so the iron isn't actually connecting in with the wood, and so you want to actually I, like I'll hold here and have a little bit of down pressure here on the toe, and so as I cut in, I'll get that. My hands are not big enough to do <laughs> all those things. I really need to get you a number one. That's what I do when I, when I spend a thousand dollars and I'll be like, yeah, it's for my wife. Still waiting for that vacation to Hawaii first. Then we can discuss. <laughs> See, and I don't, I'm sure part of it is height. Because I'm, oh, there we go. Maybe. Okay, hang on, hang on now. It would be easier if you were a little taller. Or if the bench were a or little Or was shorter. the bench was my height, yes. And I gotta go till this is yeah, as deep you're, as You're this. at depth at this point. Okay. But you're not even a quarter of the way here. So, oh I can't. Could I turn it around? No, because the fence is on this side. Darn it. I'll get it. I'll get it. It might become a four-hour show. <laughs> I'm only doing one of these. <laughs> so I've got to be getting close. I'm not doing many curls. They're all going to be like, how can I pay to have James come to my <laughs> shop and give me one-on-one -on -one tutorial? There you go. Nope, nope, nope. nope. Oh, 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 oh. The fence is in there, not the blade. <laughs> I'll get it. I'll get it. I was trying to go fast and it didn't work. Uh oh. It sounds like someone needs attention. I will let you finish. Someone's crying. <laughs> Let's finish this up. There you go. She's only about two strokes off. So there's one down. Now, let me show it to you in real time how long it takes me to do one full board. And some of these, when they're going with the grain, I could set it a little bit deeper and take a heavier cut. But some of them, when it's not going with the grain, it's just not wise. There's one side. Let's see, flip back around. Put it on this side. Let's 
to this side. Oop. A little bit harder. We're moving over. There. There's another one, so we're halfway done. Who hit who? Oh, Arthur was the one crying. They were trying to Marco Polo with the lights off. Marco Polo with the lights off? Uh-huh. All in one room? Yep. What questions do we got while we're in the basement? <laughs> Almost there. Three more to go. If you think this is boring, wait until we get to the dovetails. <laughs> Ooh, falling. Yeah, it was nice. I like it when they go with the green. One more. Did you? Oh, that's just so sad. What? How many you have done in the like two minutes I was gone? <laughs> Whoa, that one's going against the green. Here, let me show you that. I'm getting a whole pile of a tear out on this one. Focus on the right thing. Let's look at that. So you can hear the sound difference. Just kind of crunchy, crispy, but it's in the groove. It's okay. So Randy Bose wants to know how tall your bench is since you're about the same height. I have my bench on the high height for most people my height. Uh, it's 38 inches. Um, so most people my height like a bench around 36 inches. Um, but I find the, the higher height to be more comfortable. I usually tell people when they're trying to figure out how high to make their bench, grab a board and a plane and go around the house and see what feels comfortable to you. Put it on the dining room table, put it on the countertop, put it on the washer or the dryer. Step on different things to raise yourself up and down. And find something that feels good to you and then go with it. That's really the only thing that's important. I like when I'm working for my, my, my pushing hand to be, my elbow to be slightly higher than perfectly, ver uh, perfectly horizontal. If it's down here, it's just a little too high. I like it to be up here. Some people like it to be lower so that they can put more down pressure on the bench. Uh, but this is about where I like it to be. There we go. We are now a very groovy bunch. So we've got our grooves. Um, now we could do two different things. Number one, we could plane these down until they fit in, which, yeah, let's go ahead and do that now since we got this all set up. And then we'll do the dovetails on it. So let's slide this in here and we'll grab my four and a half because it's set up to take off a lot more material. I'm just going to go across these, starting at one side. Working all the way to the other. I could bring in the scrub plane, but I don't have that much to take off. And we're almost there. And we're good on that corner. Almost there. A bit thick on that corner. So good on this corner, thick on this corner. So I'm going to spend more time on this corner here. I'm just going to start here and just going to do this little area. And I'll go in a little ways and then pull up. Let's check it again. And we're in the groove. Hey, I like that slide. You need a little bit more right here in the middle. 
Need a little bit more on this corner. And that side's really good. So I need more on this corner to like here. So let's do something like that. Ooh, ran into the dog. That's why I have aluminum dogs. Yes, you can plain aluminum. And now I'm going to come in with my smoothing plane. Just do one pass all the way across. Just like that. Good. Just a hair tight. Good. And I want it to slide because it's going to be a sliding top. So I'm just a bit thick along this edge. We can do that. And now, now we get a good slide on there too. So there's our top and or bottom. I don't know which it is. Let's do the same thing again on this one. Any questions? Hey, Thoughts? Yeah. Snide remarks? Ooh, super chat. Hi from Cape Town. Nice. Good to have you. One of these days we'll get out to South Africa. Hello. I would love to show off some South African woodworking. Oh, we got a good bit more to do, especially in that corner. Or should this I say, how's it? How's it? All right, mom joke, mom joke. Yeah, we'll be going to South Africa someday. Now, just not now, now. <laughs> I have corrupted my family. <laughs> okay, what's the difference between a sharply dressed man on a unicycle and a poorly dressed man on a bicycle? Sharply dressed unicycle. No, a sharply dressed man on a unicycle and a poorly dressed man on a bicycle. What? A tire. A tire. <laughs> <laughs> Getting close. <laughs> All right. Okay, now let's come in with a smoother. And I'm just focusing in spots that need to be focused, because in this case, it's pretty well flat, so just about anywhere across it. And I want it to fit in there and slide easily. That side's a bit tight. Okay. That's a bit tight. I have a couple questions. Okay, what you got? So the duck asked, and I miss. What's that? <laughs> Um, okay, so Duck asked, wooden planes normally require a different height than iron planes. Would using a number three or a number two hand plane work better than the four for this job today? Um, not really. They're pretty equal. Uh, for something like this, they'd all do about the same. I do the four because my... My smoothing plane, my Veritas custom plane, is set up really nicely right now. And so it gives me a pretty good edge. There. Now we've got ourselves a top and bottom. And they are, let me switch back over to this one. Oh, look at my belly. Isn't that a nice belly? Just don't start dancing. So now we've got these in here. And you can see how they're slightly shorter. So when I put this on, and then I put this on, should be, yeah, we just have a little bit extra over here. So number one, I could cut these a little shorter. Or number two, those give me my slop for um, the expansion and contraction of the drawer, which is what I'm going to be doing, other than the fact I need to make sure that these are all nice and square. And they're pretty close, um, but I want them to be dead on. So for that, we're actually going to be coming in with a square, and I'm going to check them. Like this one is off just a little bit. Um, and so I'm actually going to grab my shooting board, and we're going to clean them up on that. What question do we have while I set that up? So Woodwork Learner wants to know, how would you plane... How did what? I don't know if he's at, if they're asking how to plane sitting down or plane that down. Because some people, you know, they don't have the 
ability to stand for long periods of time, I think is the route we're going down. How do you down. plane sitting down? Yeah. Um, you just have a lower bench and you have to sit on something solid. Um, I do know quite a few people um, who do hand tool woodworking from a wheelchair. Uh, it's not easy, but it can be done. Um, you just have to make sure that the wheelchair is solid um, and your tools have to be sharper um, because a sharp tool will suck itself down into the wood and you don't have to then have that down pressure. Um, but even then, if you're sitting beside the bench, you still want to have a, a good angle on it because you're sitting, you're probably going to want to have it a little bit lower on average than having it up somewhere around here. Um, but again, that's a completely personal preference. Um, I would say grab a few things and set it to height and play around with it. So uh, you know you how people. you've talked about people who make like those benches and apartments and stuff. Would you say like a bench like that size? A few people talk about what? Yeah, I, I don't know. A while ago. You know, people who have like apartments who don't have shop shops. Oh, yeah. There's like a, a different kind of a bench style I felt like that you recommend. Well, yeah, that tends to be more like a bench on bench. Ah, okay. um, and so you have a small bench that you can put on a... On a uh, <coughs> A countertop or a table. So, perfect. I want to make sure that these are all nice and square. And the shooting board makes that very easy. Perfect. See, now what I'm looking for is I want these to be in focus. I want it to be nice and square across there. So that one's good. Let me try one of these and see what we got. So this one, you can see that one has a good bit of gap. I don't know if you can see it right here in the corner. So I need to take off more material on this side. So we set here on the shooting board. And I'm thinking about doing a video here soon making another shooting board. I have a video making this one. And I have a video on um, cleaning this one up as well. Just leave it corn shaving. So poor man wants to know, would the bench you built for the kids be perfect for a small apartment? Um, if you have space for the bench, yes. Most of the time with a small apartment, you have um, a small bench that then goes on top of a desk. And so rather than having legs, it's just it's basically the bench top with some rubber feet that sit on top. So for reference, in my opinion, I'm not a very good visualizer. The the kids bench reminds me of like those tables you can put behind couches as about that size if that helps people are you going to be using the shooting board a lot nope I go. a couple more passes and oh, actually it's the last one oh. why well you want one yes come do it Okay, so you can see how that isn't perfectly square. It's touching here, but there's a little bit of gap on this side. Yeah. Okay. So we want to take off material on this side. Okay. So I'm going to set it down here. Okay. Let me turn this camera around so I can show people what you got. This, um, your left hand goes on the workpiece. Like so? Yep. Um, so what you're going to do is you want to push this. Pull your hand out for a moment. This piece, your hand is pushing it into the stop. Okay. It's also pushing it into the work, into the plane. Okay. So uh, for me, it's like grabbing it like this most yeah. of the time. Um, but for you, it's probably going to be more of just pushing it. Okay. So then this comes in here. Yes. This hand go, right, right hand goes on here. So here, let me show you. It's like this. Actually, just grab the plane. Yep. Um, and then this hand comes on here, and you want to push it up against this. Okay. But you also want to, uh, this one to have a little bit of slop here. Okay. So you want to make sure the plane is pushed against there as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this hand on here. Back up the uh, or, no, actually the, the iron right here is in, in line with it. So Wait, what, what? Push it through. I'm good. That's yep, what you're, you're saying. Oh, okay. Yep. There you go. That's it. That's all it needs. Oh. That's all it needs. See? Nice and tight. Yeah, a good shooting board, if it's set up well, is, is very, very easy to use. Um, you really don't need a lot of pressure. Um, unless you're doing you know, really hard, dense woods, it, it goes pretty well. Um, but 
it's all down to how sharp it is and particularly at low angles make this very, very easy because you're doing end grain. So Did now- Randy really just say run like a girl? Randy, Randy, Randy. <laughs> I flip flops on, I shouldn't be wearing them in the shop. <laughs> Make sure, yep, these are all good. So we have sides, we have top and bottom. Now we can do the dovetailing. Ha ha ha. Why dovetails are fun. So y'all need a super this. chat so James can't say I can't do this part. <laughs> now, when working with small pieces like this, um, dovetails, um, yeah. They're, they're easier in some ways in that you're removing less material, but they're harder in other ways because the smaller your work gets, the more gaps show up because you're looking at them closer and littler gaps now look bigger. So it's very, very hard to make small dovetails work, but you make big dovetails work and you can live with some gap in there and really not notice it. Um, but yeah, that's... First thing I need but to do is don't mark Don't you in. always say it's not about perfection? Um, I need to mark in He's the me. thickness of these. Yes, I am ignoring you. What is new? <gasps> Just stating reality. You are asking for it, Buster. <laughs> I'm always asking for it. <laughs> so we got this set up. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, let's mark around these boards. So, so what I'm we're going to mark what? in... Oh, you're talking. The depth that I need to cut for the dovetails. <laughs> Someone's singing. <laughs> we get part aria during this too. <laughs> what were you gonna say, babe? Uh, woodwork learner wants to know: Can you batch cut dovetails on thin boards? Yes, and I'm going to do that here, but you still want to cut them in. Uh oh. We are going to gang cut. Let's yeah. see, this is left and right. Let me do that in there. In a little while. Go play. Oh, that on that. oh, you're cold. Go watch a movie. So my cousin's actually a pretty good lawyer. <laughs> I own everything already anyways. Yep. <laughs> Unfortunately, most of the things are in her name because they don't like it when people work from home, work, work uh, their own business. That one, two more ends, one more end. There, we've got our depth cut, and I'm going to cut my tails on the sideboards, so left and right. And I want to make sure that the arrows are pointing the same way. I'm going to put them together, I'm going to lock them down, and now I'm going to put them into the vise. And we are going to gang cut the tails together. And I want to make sure these are indeed parallel. On like that. Oop, I need to tap you down just a little bit. So this one's high. Now they're flush. Make sure that they're square this way. Make sure they're square that way, and we are good. So now I have these on here, and I'm going to grab my Bearcat dovetail saw. Ooh. And now I want to put two tails on these and I have a question of where to put this groove because the groove is going to be showing on the tail or on the face and we may end up coming and filling them later. I'll, we'll see about that. Um, but I'm trying to think through this. If I have the groove on the end, it'll show on the face. So I want the tail to be in there so it's showing in the tail. Yes. So I'm actually going to use the outside of this to be the edge of 
the tail, and that way the groove shows on the sides rather than the front of the box. And I'm just going to freehand it down to there. And then I'm going to come over here a little bit past halfway. And I'm going to freehand it. Down to there. Then I'm going to come over here and do the same thing on this side. Okay, wait, I missed something. Why are you putting a line in the middle? What's that? I missed something. Why are you putting a line in the middle? Um, these are the, the tails. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Making sure how it looks. Move over just a little more. Right there. So Logan... Just eyeballing the whole oh. thing. I'm trying that. There. So, actually move this down a bit so you guys can see this better. I have a question when you have a moment to breathe. What's that? Logan logging on wants to know, do you have any tips for keeping your workbench clean? No, I wish I knew. <laughs> um, I have a bench that's long enough that I can have a bunch of things on one end and they don't cause me problem. Um, but I am not a fan of tool wells. They just tend to collect and clog. So, personal preferences though. Okay, now we're going to flip it over. Do the same thing on this side. So, did so you, what? because I, you know, have to pay attention to the comments too. So, if you said it already, I'm sorry to the folks watching. Did you mark those lines already or are you just nope, eyeballing? just eyeballing them. This is usually how I cut dovetails. When I did the live the other day showing fast cutting, I wanted to do all of the normal dovetail work. But this is my normal dovetail work. And I just eyeball it all. Yep, that's what I want. So I'm just making that first cut to see how does it look. Does it look balanced? If it looks balanced, it's good. So like the Jimmy Duresta, if it looks straight, it is straight. There we go. So there are, um, there are the tails. Now we're going to cut down and cut off this excess. Okay, so because you, you just have to explain everything to me 20 times. What? Remind me how the miter dovetail works. Like why you have oh, to cut. Oh, uh -oh. miter dovetail. A moment too late. Uh-oh, they were distracted, sorry. Let me see. Oh, we'll do mitered on the top and square on the bottom. Then. Ah, you said I would slaughter it. But yes. How the mighty fall. <laughs> so, give me a moment. Before we go any farther, I'm going to grab a little file. And okay. I'm going to clean these up. So what exactly is your mistake besides you going, uh-oh? Um, well, the next thing I need to do is actually miter them. Okay, meaning? Because this isn't mitered. Miter is a cut at 45 degrees. So I these gotcha. need to go onto here, and I need to cut corner to corner down to that. So what I can do is now that I cut this tail in, I need to cut down 45 degrees on here rather than cutting it flush across. So on this side, I cut it flush across. On this side, I need to cut it at 45 so you, degrees. The bottom one is like a regular dovetail versus a miter. Yes. Gotcha. So you get both sides. Hey, I'm just awkward. I just missed it. That's so okay. So what we're going to do is I'm going to grab my unsquare or my miter square. And I'm going to put this on here. And I'm actually going to draw a line on here. And then I'm going to do the same thing on this end. Okay, it's really funny when you hold your fingers in like that when you're using your marking knife because it almost looks like you cut fingers off. <laughs> and if anything, I'm going to stay away from this line. But now that we have that line, I'm just going to stay a little ways away from it. I'm just using a little bit of the saw because I'm 
terrified of taking off too much. You take off too much and you can't put it back. And then I'm going to file it back closer to that line. But I'm not going to take it all the way back. Staying away from it a little bit. Right, that's one. I need to do that eight times. So we're going to do the same thing on this end. Trying not to get the camera in my way. Now, bring this in and file it back. So, that's the difference. This is a regular dovetail, and then a mitered dovetail looks like this, except for I'm going to have this slash here, which I shouldn't have had. Um, and so we'll have to fill that or something of that nature, but oh well. Such is life. We keep on going. Let's miter these ones. What questions we got? I have a question. What's that? When are we doing another giveaway? Ooh, good question. You come up with one and we will oh. do another shirt giveaway. I can smell the smoke from here. Shut up. Shutting up. You ready? I'm ready. Who remembers when James's birthday is? Ooh, that's a good one. So I do, I do, I do. <laughs> first person <laughs> to enter, are, what, are we giving away another shirt? Yep, another shirt. Another shirt. So first person to enter James's month and date. You don't have to have the year um, that James is born on. You got 365 chances of getting it right. <laughs> One in 365 chances. Well, almost 364, actually. Yeah. Well, percentage so of getting it right would be 365 It's not leap day. I can give you that hint. <laughs> there. Light. Got our miters. Oops. So these are our sides of the box. Now we need to cut, uh, now we need to take out the excess in these. That's right. So for that, I'm going to grab a bunch of things on the floor. <laughs> Didn't need that, anyways. Um, do I have a little screen? No, I'll just be careful with it. So I'm going to put these on here. I'm going to gang them up so that I can cut them out a little bit faster. So, is anyone getting close yet? Nope. Really? I thought that would have been an easy one. Don't give them any hints. I might give them a hint later if no one can get close. Oh, Randy Bowes! Oh, I just hit the thing. What? Randy Bowes got it. Woo -hoo. He's a Valentine's baby. That was going to be my hint that it was on a holiday. But. So we're going to stay away from the line. It's like a mantra on this channel. Stay away from the line. Okay, do I get to cut one though? What's that? Do I get to cut one? Um, yeah, I guess we can do that, but not, not right now. Let me flip around and you can, okay. you can do it. So Randy, um, send me your shirt size. And your address, and I will uh, get that out to you. Now, let me pair these off, and you can come and pair out the other side. Okay. So we're going to chop in and then pair out until we're down about halfway. I probably don't even need the mallet on this because I'm taking off so little. <laughs> now that we're down halfway, I'm going to put this knife chisel right into that line. And we're going to go down. And the nice thing about game cutting is that because they're stacked up here, I can do the same process over and over again. Because I'm only doing one set, it's not going to save me that much time. But if I'm doing a chest of drawers, it can save a lot of time. And I know some people that will put these right up against each other so that you can use 
the previous previous step as a chisel guide. Um, but I don't like doing that. I like to have a little bit of flexibility in it. There, I'm going to cut down that side. I'm going to flip them over. And now, put a hold fast down. Sneeze. Just kidding. Nope. Ah, oh, <laughs> man, that was a good one. Oh. I'd tell you to look at the sun, but we're downstairs. <laughs> Same thing on this side. Stay away from the line. Chop in close to the line. And then pair out. And chop in and pair out. So Clark says thank you very much for helping him out the other day. Oh, yeah. Now I like answering questions whenever I can. sent me, uh, I think it was an email. <laughs> AK Cat says, James, can you not make a pull-out step so Sarah can use your bench? <laughs> I have thought about making a full length um, step that goes along the uh, front edge of the bench so that she could work on it. Um, but but maybe Sarah just needs to build her own since James always says the first step to being to building your shop is building she your own. She does way. listen to me. I do listen. Now I've been thinking about making a Moravian bench so that I can take it on trips and such. And I can make two sets of legs. One for me when I go and one for Sarah when she's here. Okay. So there is what it would normally oh. look like. Um, the only difference is if I were making this a mitered dovetail, I wouldn't have made that cut all the way through. I would have cut at an angle so you don't see that gouge coming out. Someone's having fun upstairs. Um, JJ's not getting attention, so he must scream louder. <laughs> so now we did that. We're going to turn around and do, do the same thing on the other side. Small dovetails are easier in some ways and far more difficult in others. And it's one of those things where they're, they're fun because they're different, but they're very tedious in that you feel like you're not getting as much done per time. So, this is what is good enough. I can just push in. And cut out. Let's chop in again. more pair out. Ooh. Didn't put too much pressure on my hold fast because I don't want to don't want to dent the work. But without enough pressure it doesn't move. It moves. There we go. So now that we're down about halfway, now we can go back into that knife line. And Go the rest of the way. So I'm set it in right at that line. Keep it vertical. Tap it until the, to the tone changes. We're listening to the sound of the chisel. So who died? Oops. Oh, she's not back yet. So who died? Oh, it's actually Melody. Really? Drama Queen strikes again. Well, she ran on the wood floor and tripped over a blanket, so. Oh, that's, that's Melody. <laughs> she is <Mike>. Ella Klotz. <laughs> Don't know where she gets it from. Oh, we know where she gets it from. 
Okay, same thing on this side, and then we'll be done with the tails, and we can move on to the pins. Ooh, too hard. Hey, did you do it all without me? Oh, you want to do one? Yes, I want to do Come one. Come on over here. I'll trim this one out, and then you can do the other side. Pull my britches up. Make sure I don't get whacked on the head. Okay. So. All right. Like that. So what you want to do is you want to start away from the line. So yes. this line, we want to back it out to like around here. Yes. And tap it down a little ways. Yes. A little harder. Not too much, just a little harder. Ooh. Oh, that's a little harder. Okay. Now pull it out, move it over. Okay. About there. As long as you're not in the knife line. Yep. Okay. Now pull out those chunks. And now you want to put it right into the knife line. Like that. Uh, no, move it over this way, Louise, because you don't want to cut into the tail. You want the corner of the chisel to be right into the corner of that. Uh, Too far over? Nope, that's good. And straight down? Yep, straight down. But you're going to want to hold the chisel like that. That way it doesn't bounce around on you. That would have been helpful earlier. <laughs> yeah. So then do it on this side? Yep. Just like that? Yep. Now you see how there's a little bit of junk in there? Yeah. We want to get rid of that with a file. Oh, cool. So I'll do one and show you. This one, I have just stick the tip in here. And you can just get rid of any of that excess in there. See that? Mm -hmm. Give it a try. Oops. I don't want to be overzealous, but I feel like this is higher yeah. right here. Uh, the, what you want here, turn around this way. Okay. And kind of pivot it this way, lift it up so you're putting more force on the outside. I love when you're yeah, like, add this. height. Here, do it this if way. I could add height, I wouldn't be this height oh, for the rest of my life. Not that far, just a, just a little bit. Okay, now flatten that out a little more. Like that? A little more flat. I thought I was flat. No, you're, you're up like this, and you'd be like that. All right? That's good. Okay. They want to see rookie mistakes. <laughs> just make sure. Yep, that's good. Cool. So now we've got our two sides of the box. Now we want to make the front and back. So we make the tails that match, the, the pins that match. Um, and this time I'm going to make sure that I don't have that cut from the uh, the, the miter dovetail. Okay, so front. Um, I always start with the back because if I'm going to be learning what I'm doing and just remembering it, I always want to start with the back. Less problems. And this is back and right. So these two are going to go together. So let me grab my block plane. And unfortunately, you can't really gang cut pins. Guys, I'm going to say something on Google. So if you guys have Google at home and you have it on the speaker, might want to turn it down. OK, Google, broadcast. Kids, don't use Google to broadcast. Thank you. Oh, that didn't work. Let me just make sure back, right. OK, Google, broadcast. Kids, do not use Google to broadcast. Thank you. Do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> So I'm going to lift this up. This is the side with the pins. Flip this around. I'm going to lift this up. This is the side with the pins here. And I'm going to slide it over and make sure it's the same height as my block plane. Slide this over. And I'm going to put this on and mark out exactly where all of these are. So I IAK Cats asks, cannot all tails be mitered? Cannot all tails be mitered? Uh, well, that would be a full blind dovetail. And that is a lot more work, a lot more work. 
And I mean a lot more work. So I'm going to stick it in there, try and get underneath the tails, get a nice clean line. And this one is the hardest one because it's back in there. And now I want to make sure I cut on the right side. So I'm going to grab a marker. I'm going to mark out the chunks that need to disappear. So I need this to disappear and this to disappear. And now we're going to cut down. Can you? Here. Uh, hang on. Can you do an one that? looking down? What's that? You on your camera? Or no? Oh, uh, camera angle? Yeah. Um, I can turn on this one. I mean, I don't know if that makes it more helpful for them, but like, I can't see anything. Oh, no, I don't have that on. Do you not have that on? I'll turn it on. It'll just take a moment. It should pop up in a moment. On. And it's trying. It's still oh, trying. but that's really far away. Yeah. Um, that's, oh. I, want, I need to get a better camera for that. Um, making sure I stay on the right side of the line and then cut straight down. Now for little tails like this, perfectly straight isn't quite as important as big tails. So I can eyeball it here. I'm actually going to look at the reflection in the saw to give myself an idea of what is vertical. So, there's that one. Now, I'm going to rotate it because I need to cut the, the um, miter on this side. So I can bring over my miter square and I can remember which way it goes. Mark the miter here. And I want to cut the miter off before I do anything else because you can't test the dovetail until you cut the miter. Clean that up with the file. That. And then we can come back and chop these off. Actually, it's, uh, no, it's gang cut them. So now that we've got this side, now we need the back and the left with the, uh-oh, uh-oh, no, right, did I do that, uh-oh, just a second, I gotta make sure I'm doing this right, okay, back and right, oh, this is right, I just had it upside down, so that means that left needs to be this way. So I'm always making sure I have my arrows on here. I'm going to turn this around, set that there, make sure it's in the right place, and then rinse and repeat. So what kind of questions we have while I go through this over and over again? So Clark wants to know, what's the longest board you would use a dovetail joint on? I made a bookshelf about four feet tall and marking the pins was a legit challenge. Um, you can make it whatever you want. Uh, really, it's, I. I've never done one that I would say is too long, but I've never done one more than like 26 inches or so. Um, it all depends on how much work you want to do in dovetails. Um, so yeah, I don't know if I would if I would say that there is a length that is not right because I don't know of a joint that I would do instead of a dovetail that would be easier because even if you did finger joints, finger joints are actually going to be more difficult. At least in my opinion, finger joints are more okay, difficult. Are you thinking you're on your close camera? No, I'm not. I'm just talking. Okay, I'm just making sure. Okay, before we go, we're going to mark and mark. And then we're going to cut this one down. I'm going to cut you down.
after the dovetails here, it'll be fitting the bottom and cutting the rim to the top. And I think I'm going to do a little quick carving. And I'm going to glue it up with super glue so that we can do it live and finish it. And then we'll do a giveaway. So not too far off, actually. Make so, sure. Okay. Are you doing the giveaway live? Or yes, how are yeah, you? we're going to do the giveaway at the end of this video. Once it's all done, we will be giving this away. Um, and it is only available for people who are live. Because I want to say thank you for being here. Otherwise, it gets really boring in the shop. Trust me. I spend Apparently. a lot of time in the shop without anyone or just the kids in the background noises. And it is not as much fun as it sounds. <laughs> Thus, the kids in the background noises. I don't know if you guys can hear them, but... I prefer that over screaming. We're getting close. There's that one. So this one's ready for chop out. So, let's make sure we got this back. Here, let's flip it around. Back, right, left. Now we need to put on front, which goes on this way. So I need to do this. At this point, you want to make sure you are very, very, very careful about which one's back, right, front, upside down, right side up, because it's easy to mix them up. Very, very easy to mix them up. And I've done it more times than I can count. And then you look at things and be like, I made this, this set of pins twice now. So Nick Gaspard wants to know, he just received a board of, is it ePay? ePay? Um, but I've not worked with it before. Is there anything I need to know before I do? Oh, eBay, ePay is just a total pain. It is a, an incredibly difficult wood to work with. Um, great for exterior work, but not great for hand tool works. It's just, it's annoying. Um, it's not mean, it doesn't mean that it's, it's bad. It's just, it's, it's bad. <laughs> um, yeah, you're going to need to be crazy sharp, and you're going to be resharpening all the time because Ipe dulls your saws faster than anything else because it has such a high silicon content. Um, it's just, it's not, it's not a happy wood. Cut on the right side of the line, not the left side of the line. And now you want to cut on the left side of the line, not the right side of the line. And when you're learning to cut dovetails, you want to do a bunch of them. But I usually tell people, don't do practice dovetails. Practice dovetails are nice and all, um, but they don't have any skin in the game. It's kind of like you can't play real poker unless you spend money. Um, it's just one of those things that you don't learn as much if you're not making it valuable. Um, so usually I tell people, make your first dovetail one that is in a piece of furniture. And, you know, as long as you follow the steps and you're okay with it, you're going to make a functional dovetail. You'll make something that will work. But um, it may not be perfect. I mean, it won't be perfect. No one makes a perfect dovetail in their first one. Mine were just hideous. Um, but doing it in an actual piece forces you to slow down, not gouge things like that, forces you to slow down and think about what you're doing and why you're doing it. And I just realized that I'm going to have one of these corners that actually is a good miter dovetail now because I cut all of those that way. Oh well, I'll explain what I'm doing here. Let me show you, because 
when these come together, uh, focus in, where is it? Focus, there it goes. When these come together, I'm going to have this saw kerf line here and this saw kerf line here, and I keep forgetting to not make that saw kerf. And so I'm going to do it on this last one and not make that saw kerf on this side. So I'll have one side of one corner that's still good, which is going to go front, right, that way. So let's do this one. Okay, your camera went. Yeah, I'm just a moment. I'm going to set that. There you go. Um, so let's set this on here. And the way it's supposed to be done when you transfer the lines is you transfer the first three like normal. One, two, three. Then you transfer the third one like normal, except for you have to remember this one only gets cut diagonally. You don't cut straight down. And so normally I'm going to start with this one. Man, I can't believe I went that far out. Oh well. And I'm just going to cut this one like that. That way I don't have a saw curve coming down the front face. And then the rest of these you cut like normal. So I might end up doing some sort of like weird spline thing on that to fill them. But usually I'm just going to keep the mistake because a reminder of mistakes is a great thing to have. So I shouldn't make my joke right now that's going through my head? What's that? Reminder of mistakes. What about? I didn't hear what you said. No, what do you say? Oh, that's why you keep me around? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. I love you. There. Now, one more miter. We can chop out the waste and see how close we came on all of these. And there's something interesting about this one is I'm, I'm going a little faster than I normally go just to make things happen for live. Um, and part of that is making me skip a few steps and things of that nature. But part of it is kind of taking the pressure off because if I mess up, oh well, I mess up. It's part of the project. I don't have time to go back and build a new one right now. Um, and so that actually makes things a little easier for some reason. Okay, now we need... Oh, wait. I'm not as bad as I thought I was. I had to really stop and think that one through. So let me actually go back and explain things. So um, right front, there we go. So on these ones, in order to make this actually sink down, I do need that saw curve to go all the way down. So this is right. You, you are supposed to cut down. <laughs> this is wrong. You're not supposed to cut there. So like I did on that one, you're supposed to do on the tail side. But on the pin side, um, you're supposed to cut all the way down. My brain is going all over the places right now. Uh, so let's see, where is the one I need to work on? This one. So I do need to cut that all the way down. Okay, let me just make sure I've got that right before I go any farther. So front, top, right, there. Yep. So let's put that back in there. Let's cut right on that edge. Right down there. There we go. Not as much of a fool as I thought I was. Well, maybe I am, but. <laughs> so now we can repeat the process of removing the, uh, the waste. So just like we did before, except for in this time, we're going to do it from the tail sections. So what questions do we have while I work on this? So Woodwork Learner wants to know, what do you think of the Rob Kosman Kos method of cutting dovetails? Um, 
fine. He works well. Um, he is a bit more perfectionistic about it than I am. And so he has a lot of other you know, jigs and setups. And like in my, the one where I did not too long ago, or uh, the last live actually, where we were doing how, uh, how fast you can do dovetails. I use dividers because that's kind of a standard thing. Um, and I didn't, I don't normally use, dove, I don't use, normally use dividers as you can see in this one. But there are a thousand ways to make dovetails. And it's one of those things that eventually you'll come up with your own method. It's ever so slightly different from every other method you've seen, but they're little things that you do differently. And until you do that, um, you just never quite get it. And so there really is no good or bad way to cut dovetails as long as they end up cutting dovetails. Um, anytime you say, ooh, that's the wrong way to cut dovetails, you're, you're going to be running into problems. Because there, there is no wrong way as long as you're doing it safe. And you end up with dovetails. So, Yeah, no, he does great work. What else we got? Um... Well, Gerald says, James, you still make me strive to be a better man, husband, father. Thank you. <laughs> Glad I could help. That's because I've had long time to train him the right way. <laughs> I would not be where I am today without my wife. In more ways than one. He'd be a hermit in Alaska otherwise. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> I, I would probably have picked up hand tools for a different reason. No, he's a good guy. So I picked up hand tools so that I could do woodworking, but be a stay-at-home dad at the same time. Because doing it with power tools just wasn't going to be an option. Space, sound, having kids around. Nap time. Nap time. <laughs> um, but... I wouldn't have had that option if Sarah wasn't um, the main breadwinner at the time. And so that has changed things. But yeah, if, if it wasn't for Sarah, I'd probably be somewhere in Alaska or mountains of Colorado, living off grid, having a good old time, but a very different person. <laughs> there, it's all the way through on that side. Flip it over, do the same thing on the other side. Clean out any chips, anything that gets in the way. And then chop down. I have to say, your skill set is part of the reason why I agreed to start dating you. But it wasn't the, uh, the, the water pump blowing out on our date. <laughs> that it was our, our first official date. We Your mama's driving. on the, the live now, so. Oh, I got to. <laughs> no, but it's true. No, our first official date, we're driving <laughs> along in my beat up truck, and it starts overheating. And when we mean beat up, we mean the, like duct taped together. The name was Bondo. <laughs> <laughs> because it was Bondo. Um, there was more Bondo than there was steel on it. And over the years of having that thing, I replaced pretty much everything on that truck. Um, almost everything. I mean, even some of the frame was replaced. Um, but yeah, we were driving along and suddenly it starts overheating and we try and find a place to add water to the pump. Come to find out the... Uh, Serpentine belt popped, and the serpentine belt ran around the water pump. And uh, we had no cooling. So how are things going in COVID world, Mom? Oh, let's see. Steven does Vaughn, what does he want? He wants to, says he's, 
Just got a number five Stanley transitional plane. Any tips on what to do with the wooden sole? It has some crackling and it's cracking and it's a bit worn. Um, that's one of the nice things about a transitional plane is if you want a new sole, you can make a new sole. Um, it's not something that you have to keep the original unless you have it for collectible reasons. Um, yeah, but you know, a good boiled into oil bath, soak it up. It does some amazing things for it. All right, let's see what we got here. Back, top, no, we need right. So let's see, here's the first one. Oh, let me switch over to this. Here's the first one going together. No, that's not the right one. Back. There, that's the right one. <laughs> that's just not working right. Oh, wow. That is pleasing. And then you can see the miter on there. A little bit of clamping pressure, and that will seal up nice like. They don't always come together like that. They don't usually come together like that. <laughs> Just gonna do a little bit of work on here. There, that was ready. So we got that corner ready to go. Now we need to clean up front, back, so this one should go on here. Right? can't see. I'm just trying to figure out what I did here. That one goes on there. That one's not quite as tight, but the miter on that one's actually a little nicer. But it is more than tight enough. So let me make sure I got this. Right. What in the world did I do here? What did I do? Did I make it fit? I did, didn't I? I did. Oh no. <laughs> I cut one tail twice. Uh oh. No, that one goes that way. Let me just see if I do it this way too. Okay, that one's good. So this one needs to go this way. And that one's wrong. So did I cut them this way? No. Uh-oh. Okay. Sorry, I gotta figure out what I did here first before I go on any further. Cause I messed up, I think. Okay, you would go into there. That's the loose one, but I need you to go into there. That's not going to work. So the other option would have been this way, but I can't do that one yet. So was the other option this one? Okay, that's the good joint. Let's keep that one. So I got to recut one of these somehow. Maybe. Yep, I gotta recut that one. So, these ones need to be cleaned up still, so let's go ahead and do those. I'm gonna keep these together so that I remember that's the one I wanna cut. But let's actually go ahead and clean these up and then figure out what all I did wrong. So I think I cut one pin set twice. Oops. Such is life, such is life means that I'm going to have one corner that's going to be a bit gappy. So you might not want to actually win this box. <laughs> what other questions we got? Uh, hmm. Let's see. Amir. 
Muhammad asks, did you set your saw? How often do you set before or after sharpening? Um, I usually set my saw every four or five sharpenings, and I usually set it after sharpening. There are a lot of people out there that say you have to set it before sharpening. Um, I disagree with that, both in that you have to and that it's best to. I find it much easier to set after sharpening um, and then to only do it occasionally. But when I sharpen, I, I don't take off much material. I, I keep it pretty close. And so because of that, I have um, less material coming off means you have less set that you lose when you sharpen. Whereas if you end up doing a lot of sharpening, you end up taking off a lot more set. And so in which case it would be better to set more often. Bump set spike. Alrighty. Very Volleyball good. was a big part of my family growing up. Sorry, what's next? So Nick Gaspard asked, I have one of your marking knives, but need to enlarge the handle hole slightly. Any tips because I can't get through with the drill press and I think the entire thing is hardened. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm assuming you're talking about the uh, the um, knives from Tay Tools. Yes, they come hardened. Um, they should come with the pins that are the appropriate size, so you shouldn't have to open those holes up at all. Um, but if you do have to hold open them up, you've got to get a better drill bit. Um, carbide drill bit will cut through it. But yeah, that's uh, it's hardened. It ain't it ain't pretty. Uh, the other option is you can anneal the knife and then reharden it, but that's a bit extreme and also lends itself to several other problems along the way. So I, I generally don't do that. Uh, are you ready for another question? Yep. So Clark says, have you found a project that does sell reasonably well and is worth the time to profit ratio? <laughs> I've tried everything from carving wooden spoons on up to that purple heart table. I do not sell what I make. Mostly because they're really, I have not found a way to make hand tools profitable. Um, and in every location, different things sell at different prices and for different amounts. So it's something you have to find for yourself in your own methods. Um, but yeah, for me, there's a reason I don't sell what I make. Is I will not sell things for less than the time I have in them. And for me, you know, that's usually five, six hundred dollars a day work. Um, and so it's, it's very, very expensive. So like if my table, if I were to sell that, I would, I would charge, you know, fifteen to twenty thousand dollars. And there aren't too many people out there who will be willing to pay that. But if so. you are, let me know. <laughs> so yeah, with, with hand tools, there really isn't a good way to make money. And uh, again, I don't sell what I make. I just teach people how to do it as a hobby. So. Let's see. Mr. Moose 1995 says, off topic question. I found a strange saw. It is definitely no Japanese saw, but was sharpened to cut on the pull stroke. Additionally, it has a spike at the top. Any idea what it's used for? Um, well, I mean, Different people over time can sharpen a saw to do anything they want. And so I have known some people who will cut a Western saw to cut on the pole stroke. It just doesn't work as well. Um, so I would have to see pictures of it. But I don't know what you mean by a spike on the top. Um, I'm thinking you're talking about a nib, but I don't know. It could be something completely different. So yeah, send me some pictures and take a look at it. Almost there. Cutting off the last bits and the pins. Now we can go into the line and figure out where we went messed up, clean them up, and continue on. So when you said you messed them up, what exactly messed up? Um, I think I cut the pins rather than matching to the right one. I cut one end of the pins to match one set of the tails twice. 
And so I think I have one that's not fitting right. So I want to look at it again here in a moment. Amir wants to know, have you ever made a video about how to set your saw? He's only found sharpening. Um, no, I have not done a video dedicated to setting. Um, it is on my list and one I would like to do here someday, but I have not gotten there. Um, one of the big reasons why I haven't is I want to actually do it on several different methods of setting. And it is one of those steps that is so easy that people mess it up. Um, and so I want to do it upright because otherwise it's just going to be a pain. Okay, so let's figure out where I messed up here. So, back, right. So I need to get this into okay. this one or this one. I just want to clarify. You want to be on the far away camera. Well, no, I'm, I'm just thinking through this before I move on. Sure okay. to show us. It may be that I there didn't mess go. up. So I've got those two in there. So if I didn't mess up, then this would go into this one. Um, but yes, I messed up. Did I mess up on both ends? I messed up on both ends. You can't just turn it around. Okay, so what I did here is that I think I cut... Yep. I cut these pins to match into these tails. And I need these pins to match into these tails. So I need to see that one's good and that one's good. I just need to mark this. I need to take a little bit more off of this pin here. So I'm going to mark it. So I can file it back to that because it's just a little bit too little to do with the saw. So I'm just going to take some off of this pin. Let's give that a try. Knock that around. So that one should go into here. Oh, need a little more. Not much, just a little more. And we'll see how far off we actually are. Hey, hey, hey. I'm Fat Albert. There, so I got that one in. Now the question is, can I get this one in? So this one, I'm gonna have a big gap on that side and I need to take off a lot more on that pin. So I'm gonna end up with one serious gap. So on this one, I'm gonna have a gap here, but I need to mark this here. Now I'm gonna take this apart again. And this one's big enough, I can actually cut it with a saw. So I need to take off this much. And then, come in with the chisel. And remove the waste. Clean it up with a file. Theoretically, it should fit in there, but not perfectly. Should have a gap on that one. There we go. So, there's our box. So, most of these are actually really good. I'm, I'm very, very happy with most of them. It's on this one here. We've got that gap right there. I don't know if you guys can see that very well, but you can see the gap right there. I don't know, I might end up filling that. We'll see when we get to the glue-up stage. So next up, let's see. 
this is the top and the front. I want to cut off this edge of this piece. And that way, so let's take off this side and this side. And now what I want to do is I want to cut this off so that I can glue this edge onto this piece. And that way when it slides in and out, this lip will be attached to the lid. Um, so I want to think through order of operations on this. So order of operations again. Um, I need to put it all together. I need to glue in the bottom. I need to cut off the lip, but I have to cut off the lip before I glue this together. So let us cut off the lip. Just make sure I've got this right. Just going to fit it all together and make sure that lid, that base actually fits in there. There's that. Yeah, that'll work perfectly. So you can see that is the um, bottom not, in there. Um, you guys oh, yeah, have cameras. So we've got the bottom in there. So let's cut off this lip. Let's do our trimming on the inside so we can get rid of any lettering. Um, then let's glue up the bottom. Let's do some carving in the top and then put this lip onto there and it should be ready for finish then. So let's take this apart. Let's take this side. That one, pull out the bottom, take this off. So the next thing we need to do is cut the front lip off of this. So we're going to clamp this into here. So you're going to do that before you get rid of the lettering? What's that? You're going to do that before Yeah, I'm going to cut this off first. And then okay. it's kind of we're fun. going to clean some of the lettering and then do our glue up. And then we'll work on the lid with a little bit of carving. Okay. Glue that up and be done. Can you focus the camera, please? Oh, sorry. Thank you. There we go. So I've got this in here. Now I'm going to use this groove to guide the saw. So I want to actually run it right up tight against the edge of the groove. Clamp it just a little tighter. Just like that. So I have the front edge of that. I've got this, and I want to actually take a little bit of material off of this so that I have enough space for the lid to slide past it. So I'm going to grab the plane here. Just do one, two. That's all we need on that. I'm going to do one on this side too. Yeah. Make sure to slice the finger as we go by. There. And then uh, just chamfer that a little bit. There. So we've got this and this ready to go together. And so when that slides in, there'll be the gap of a little more than a saw curve between these. Now let's clean up all of the lettering on these. And I'm just going to use a card scraper. Uh, and I'm actually going to intentionally use a dull card scraper on this because I don't want to actually um, curl the wood. I just want to scrape off any lettering that's on there. And so, so you see how it's just getting well, sawed okay. cut? I'm going to ask a question. What's that? Because in my brain, I'd be like, why don't you just use an eraser? <laughs> Um, because it's actually deeper down in there than the eraser can reach. So that one and that one. I'm not asking Here. anymore. Try it. <laughs> what? 
I want to do one. Oh, okay. Let me just finish this one. I don't think I've ever done card scraping, honestly. Just make sure. I'm trying to keep these organized. No, so. you're fine. I believe that one. And that one. I'll just make sure I'm doing this before I go any farther. That one and that one, yes. Okay, so then we'll do this. So for the card scraper, yes. you're going to hold it like this, put your thumbs up close to the edge. Yes. And you want to bend it back. Yes. And then that bent area is what you're going to actually scrape with. Yes. So. What? That is far more force than I was expecting. Yeah, it's, it's a stiff plate. <laughs> Wait, do bend, I need to go? No, wait. you're doing great. Okay. The more you bend it, the more you can focus on one spot or another. And this is a dull one, so it's giving you sawdust rather than curls, which is perfectly fine for this because we're just getting rid of the letter. Nice tool. You're done. Beautiful. <laughs> Um, and the reason I don't want to do curls is this wood is um, it's fairly finicky about that. Um, and I actually get a better surface on it if I don't go after curls. Um, and it's just one of those odd things about Filipino mahogany. Is I get a better surface if I just scratch the dust off than if I actually do the whole thing. Okay, we had... This one's the top. This one's the bottom. I'll get rid of the marks on that. And then we'll be ready for glue up. Oops, let's go with the green. Let's go with the green this way. You didn't do your usual plug of buying card scrapers or magnets. Oh, yeah, yeah. If you want to buy, <laughs> I uh, sell card scrapers and strops on my website. So you can get the actual wood by right card scraper. Because even has the, uh, the all of that logo. stuff goes directly back into the channel. So, so, just so you guys know. Thanks, the logo. You heard yeah. card shark now. <laughs> okay, um, glue up. I'm going to be using 2P10, um, and this is a, a CA Sienna Acrylate super glue basically, um, and it just is a really really good glue. Um, I mean, most any CA is going to be pretty good. But for this one, I'm actually going to be using the thick version. Um, and we are going to do this little by little and go around. And I don't mind if there's any squeeze out on this because we're going to be scraping the outside of the box later. So I'm going to put um, the camera in. Whoa, my leg is falling. I need a better tripod. This one's bad. Three, there we go. I'm going to put a little bit on. Let me make sure I'm doing this right. This one goes in there, yes. It doesn't take much. And for a little project like this, okay. CA glue is actually a really good So I'm going to ask another dumb it. question. What's that? So 2P10, is that just like anywhere you can get that? Um, yeah, I buy this one on Amazon. Um, and so now, before it sets up, I'm going to come in here with a squeeze clamp. And I'm going to squeeze this side together. And then I'm going to squeeze this side together. And then I'm going to hit it with my activator, which is missing. I thought I'd put it over here, but apparently not. Where'd my activator go? Did you uh, eat it again? Did I eat it again? Yeah. I don't even know what it looks like. I know. <laughs> I know you like to eat it. I'm so mean to me. It's what does it look here like? Somewhere. What does it look like? Um, like a spray can, but not one of these spray cans. It's not one. It's not one of the ones at the top of the stairs I here. saw. That's no. Can. It should be underneath my bench, but well, I guess we go without actor. It takes just a few seconds longer, so oh well. Just see if I put it over here. No, say. 
Oh well. Nothing. So there's one joint glued. Huh. It says 2P10 on the side. And then we're going to do the same thing in this one. That's a primer. Nope. I don't know. You want to make sure you get it on the sides of the tails and oh, pins. That's what I was thinking. Because that is the end grain that actually matters. Everything else is face grain, and that does not hold as well. Why so. that kind of glue opposed to tight bond glue? Andy Mason wants to know. Mainly because I wouldn't be able to do it live then. It would take too long. Um, Dar, also, you know. I, I really like CA glue. In most of the tests I've done, it has stood up very well. I, for little projects like this where it's not going to be in, under a lot of force, it actually holds up incredibly well. Um, so I, I like using CA glue quite a bit. It's also good for finishing if you do tur turning work. Oops, don't want it on there though. <laughs> Set that and that, so we can put this into you, and that into you. Clamp these together. So how long roughly will it take to set? A few seconds. Okay. Um, I'm going to leave it while I work on the top. If I use the activator, it's instant. Ah. And so as soon as I put the activator on, it's glued. But most of these are already glued. Just going to tighten up these miter joints a little bit. Oh, oh shoot, I didn't put the bottom in it. <laughs> Hopefully, I'm no, sorry. Oh shoot, oh. this one's setting up. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a good thing you didn't have an activator. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but they're yelling bottom on the box saying. <laughs> James is just like everybody else. <laughs> it's little things like that that I like to occasionally fit in videos. <laughs> it's actually hard to kind of get them in because you have to do more editing for it. But it's good to show reality from time to time. Order of operations. <laughs> Order of operations. <laughs> She's been listening. <laughs> Yeah, let's go back to clamping it again. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> Bushel and a peck. And a hug around the neck. Now let's make sure it's square before I go on. As it is not. So if you're having problems with actually keeping it square, then you can put a clamp corner to corner. couple dabs of glue in here to stop yep. the base from moving. And that's good. Okay, let's set this aside, let it cure up. Well, and while I'm we're doing that... wager a bet it takes a more than just seconds to set. <laughs> well, with the activator, it's as soon as the activator hits it, I it know, sets. I met without the activator. Um, but usually, so as long as it has access to get into, it's usually a, you know, a couple minutes and it's cured. You give it 10 minutes and it's as hard as it's going to get. So uh, let's do some carving. Any questions while I set that up? Uh, Let me grab a couple things I printed out. Mm. 
let's see, Woodwork Learner said, what would you do if the glue had set before putting the bottom on? How would you have fixed it? <laughs> um, live, he would have just said something very insightful. Real, not live, he probably would have thrown it. No. <laughs> um, I probably stick. would have, I need a pair of scissors. Um, I probably would have cut the bottom to then inset into the bottom. So rather than being housed in the groove, I would make the bottom a little smaller so that it would slide into the bottom. And so when you look at it from the bottom, you, looking down into the box, you'd see this groove running around. Um, not perfect, but it would work. So uh, since this is wood by right, we're going to do some carving. We're actually going to be doing some of this carving. Isn't that look great? Surprise, uh, this is something surprise. about simple Celtic weave that I find delightful and enjoyable. Um, it's just a, a really, really nice thing to do. So uh, I want to actually get this on here. We're going to use some craft glue. And I want to eyeball, I want to, not eyeball, I want to actually find where center is in this. And I need my pencil again. Where is my pencil? There's my pencil. And square. So we are family. Making sure we're good there. Yes, okay. So five and a half then means uh, two and three quarter inch is the center. And so I'm going to draw a center line on this that'll make it very easy to um, actually figure out where I want this to go. Yes, the recording. So this will go on here. And then I can kind of eyeball that. Uh, so we're going to use... Probably a few more minutes. Oh, Are no. Melody, anything? can you help me? <gasps> can you go help Daddy? I need you to go get me another glue stick from the art supplies. Sure thing. Sure thing, because I'm out of glue stick. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, so let me make sure I don't have another one in here. No, I don't. Any other questions before I move on? Um, let me scroll back up and see if I miss any. Oh, off topic. Is an Apex Moral Saw set a common one over where you are? They are from the UK. Um, not really, but there are literally hundreds and hundreds of saw set companies. And there are all different types, and every company then makes like seven or eight I different saw sets. And so there, okay. Look, tell your brothers, there, you there aren't a whole lot that are careful. really, really it's common really everywhere. Um, because there are just so many of them out there, it's hard to keep track of them. So I'm going to put some glue sticks, put some glue sticks on it. I'm going to put some glue with glue stick on there. And then, now that I've got that center line, it allows me to even it out. And we're going to put it right about there. I'm bribing with Lunchables right now. Nope, don't want to do it that way. I want to do it that way. Let's do it that way. You want to make it fancy? No, I just remembered that I've got to put this edge on there, and I want to glue it onto the long grain. I don't want to glue it across grain because if there's any expansion and contraction to this, it'll break the glue bond for this. You don't want to glue wood crossways. So now we have that on there. Now we can do some carving. Yes. So I'm going to put this into the dogs. And this is one of these things yes, that really so scares a lot of people. And when I first got into woodworking, I thought, wow, there's no way I'll ever get into carving. But it is one of those topics that anyone can do. Um, if you can draw a line with a pencil, you can carve. And so I have gotten more and more carving tools, and this is just a small collection of mine now. And I'm just going to be using a simple V-tool. Um, this is a, a Swiss-made uh, file uh, V-tool. It is a D12-6. Um, and you can pick them up quite about anywhere. It's a smaller one, so it's a little bit cheaper, so it's about 25 bucks. Um, but with a V-tool, you can do pretty much any of the carving that I do. And it's incredible. Incredibly simple. I'll even have Sarah come over here and do some of it, uh -oh. which I she's guess. done a few times. 
Um, and so with this one, I'm actually just going to go around the outside of all of these lines. And you want to start by lifting the tool. And let me do it in a line that you guys can see. So let's start here. So I'm going to lift the tool up a little bit higher. And this allows me to do a, a plunge cut. Once I'm down to the depth, then I'm going to put the tool down on a lower angle. And the angle of the tool determines the width, uh, excuse me, determines the depth of the cut. And so just like that, we've got a line. So I'm going to start one more time. And you're wanting to stay on the outside. Set up high. Yep. I'm just using the outside of the line to run right along the edge of the chisel. Just like that. You want to try? Sure. One more. Really should probably have my stool. <laughs> okay. Does it, do you have a particular line? So you grab want the, to the chisel. Uh, left hand, hold it like this, across your body. There you go. So pick the line you want to do, like uh, this one. There's wood what? chips on the floor. Oh, I have a... Oh, the glue cap. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uneven. Um, hold it with whoa, the, whoa. the... Rather than holding it up here in the handle, hold it like right there in the middle. There you go. It gives like you a that? little more control. Yep. And like... That? Put it like right there. Now lift it up higher and start it in. Now start it high. And now that you're in, now you want to lower the handle down right about there. And then just follow it along. Just don't look at this line very closely, whoever gets this box. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now you're not actually cutting. You're sliding on the top. I might. Oh, oh. Oh, no. Yeah, we, we just, see, I'm trying not to I'm make not, a mistake. I, gotta, I wanna feel what you're doing. See, because what you want, because you started in here deep. Yeah. And I think you were down just a little too low. Oh, okay. So I'll follow the line around to here. down and down you see how the, the curls getting smaller because you're oh. going down farther the higher you lift it the deeper you cut the lower you put it the shallower you cut there. Up to there. yep there you go <laughs> we want it to look nice for them <laughs> and it's one of these things that that you can practice on and uh, yeah, you do if you did this piece by the end of it You'd be 50% of the way there, if not more. You know, five, 10 minutes worth of this work, and most people can be up and going as long as you make adjustments. And so I'm just going to peek each of these. But what I'm saying is, unlike around. dovetails where you, you're telling them not to practice, you can practice carving on whatever. Yeah. Yeah, you can grab a scrap and go to town. It's not going to make any difference. Because this is one of those things that really doesn't. The focus really doesn't matter, you know, how focused you are on your work. It's more about, um, it's more about the, the skill of just learning how does the chisel feel. Because I don't even think about the angle anymore. It's just something I naturally know. I'm not cutting deep enough. I need to lower the handle. Yeah, but some of us are focused on the lines so much that yeah. we don't, we can't multitask that yet. <laughs> Keep picking lines. And Celtic weaves is one of the things I love about them because they're just, they're so simple, but when they're done, they look like you really spent a lot of time. And you can draw them out, and there's all sorts of different ways of, of drawing Celtic weaves and using compasses and so on to make them perfect. Um, but a lot of these, like this one, I just went on Google and I searched. Celtic Weave Trinity, found one I liked, saved the picture, changed the size, and back at it. 
printed it off and we've got our, our pattern. What questions we got? Um, CJ Teague wants to know, are those wood shoes comfortable? They are incredibly comfortable. And if you want to see it, I actually have several videos on my clogs. Um, and I did a live um, putting a new sole on them uh, not too long ago. But they are carved to fit my foot. So my foot fits in them perfectly. And when I stand, I have even pressure all the way around my foot. Um, so it's, it's far more comfortable than padding can be because it's an even pressure on every spot on my foot. I stand in these all day long on concrete and they're incredibly comfortable. Um, Except when you trip into them because someone leaves them by the front of the laundry door. I don't know what you're talking about. Then they hurt. <laughs> for standing around the shop, for walking around, they are phenomenal. I wouldn't have them for running, though there are some people who have gotten comfortable with it. That's, uh, there just isn't much flex for the full bend of the foot if you're running, but for walking around, for standing, they are phenomenally comfortable. So Renee Fox says, love the shape of your mallet. Did you make it or buy it? Yeah, I made it. Um, and I have several videos on making it. Um, I made a set of them for uh, Tally Ho a couple years ago. Um, and I have a video on making this one, which is my, my softer finishing mallet. I've got a couple of them. This is my, my bigger one. This is one of the first tools I ever made. Uh, this is out of a piece of firewood. And it's, it's a traditional English style joiner's mallet. Um, incredibly comfortable. Paul Sellers has a detailed video. Actually, I think it's like three videos long where he goes into making it and covers all the angles and all the aspects of it. Um, it's a lot of video though. <laughs> but I've got, I think three or four videos on making them now. All right, I got a couple more questions. Cool, what's that? So Dennis Miko asked, is this James Heritage coming out with this design? Is what? I don't know if you're... If James what? Heritage? Uh, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> now this, this is just one I found on Google and was like, yeah, I like that one. I've got a stock of ones that I've collected over the years that have uh, copyright free that I pull from. Um, Randy Bose wants to know, are your um, shoes slick on sawdust? Um, no more than rubber would be. Um, rubber is actually very, very slippery on all of these curls down here. Um, I'm going to be putting leather soles on them a little while later, but that's more or less to keep them quieter because they tend to be a little loud for some reason. Let's see. Bill Tiffin wants to know, what angle bevel do you have your V-tool? Um, whatever the factory originally had, but it's probably somewhere around 20 degrees. It's pretty, pretty fine. And when I'm done, I'm actually going to go ahead and strop it so it's ready for next time. I'll show you that. But as long as you keep it stropped and keep it sharp, you really don't ever have to sharpen it. Last line. Okay, I got another question for you. Are you ready? Yep. Okay. Charlene Sons asked, um, for slip stones for sharpening the carving tool, do you like traditional versus diamond wave or cone shape? I use diamond wave if I actually need to sharpen something. Where did my strop go? Yeah. And so generally I don't actually sharpen the chisels unless I chipped them or something of that nature. So for a V-tool, every five to 10 minutes worth of work or so, I'm just gonna do that and I'm gonna slowly roll it over because this is not a point. This is actually a micro gouge. Um, it's um, a small You're not on gouge. the closed camera. Oops, sorry. There so. Uh, okay, angle it down though. We can't see half of it. There you go. Look at that, that's better. Thank you. Uh, the, the bottom tip of this isn't a tight corner. It's actually a, a, a small gouge. It's rounded. And so I'll start flat and then I'll roll it over as I'm going. 
I'm just rolling it, rolling it, rolling it, rolling it, and now I'm on the other flat. And that's all I got to it, other than I'll take the edge and just a few strokes will clean up the inside of that. And there, that is ready to go. Crazy, crazy sharp. So that's the totality of sharpening my chisels. As long as I keep them sharp every 10 to 15 minutes of use, or every 5 to 10 minutes, um, they will stay sharp for a lifetime. And if I don't ding them up or chip them, they never have to go back to a sharpening stone. So uh, now we got this pattern to get rid of. And a lot of people really don't like that I use the project glue because it's like, oh, that pain to get up. Well, the next thing I'm going to do after I get it up is I'm going to scrape it to get rid of all the marks. So why don't I just scrape it to get rid of the pattern. And I've got a pattern that holds really well. And just like that, it's gone. So let's actually scrape this. Get rid of that pencil mark. Put that pencil mark down there pretty hard. Some people like to pull a card scraper, some people like to push it. I do a little of both because I find it easier to pull than to turn the whole thing around. Sometimes if I want to focus. There we go. There. We got ourselves our box. And so we can then take this piece of trim and glue it on right there. And then now this will slide in and out of the top. So, I set up the glue. What questions we got? Uh, Peter Wall wants to know, how many tools did you make yourself versus buying? Um, I make tools that I prefer to be specifically made for me. I want a handle that fits me. Then I'm going to make it. But a lot of tools, I tend to find them easier, cheaper, and simpler to buy than to make. But most all of my tools are antiques. I don't buy a lot of new tools. Um, so that's, again, just personal. So I'm going to use the CA glue, 2P10. Run it down this inside surface here. And I don't think the camera catches it, but it almost this wood almost has like a reddish tone mm -hmm. to it. Yeah, once the boiled linseed oil goes on there, you'll see it. How so, to sharpen the card, Amir wants to know. I've got a ton of videos on how to sharpen card scrapers. So please go look at those. Um, but I use a burnisher, which I do sell on my website if you don't have a good burnisher. So I'm going to use these clamps. And I'm going to hold that there. I'll hold that there. And just like that, we're going to set that aside, get that ready. So we are coming down the home stretch here. We've got all the glue up on this thing. What time is it? Noon? Mm -hmm. It's about three hours. A little longer than expected, but we've run into a few issues, and we've been doing a lot of talking, which isn't a bad thing. Um, for finish on this, I am going to use a high-end um, hard wax. Okay, no, I'm going to use boiled linseed oil. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to use boiled linseed oil and paste wax. And so what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to put on two or three coats of boiled linseed oil. I'm going to let it soak into the wood and let the wood take up as much as I want it to, as much as it wants to. I'm going to wait about 15, 20 minutes in between coats. Um, and then I'm going to wipe off all the excess and let it sit for half an hour, 45 minutes until it's dry to the touch. And then I'm going to come in and do paste wax, which I'm soon actually going to be selling my own paste wax on my website, too. Um, comes in a mid-wax canister, but it's actually the, the stuff I make. Um, so um, I'm not going to have time to actually show you that all live, but I'm going to put the boiled linseed oil on, explain the rest, and you'll actually see the finished product with the boiled linseed oil. But first, 
Let me see if that's dry yet. It's dry enough. Okay, now let's see, does this actually fit? So the moment of truth, does the lid slide into the box? Ta -da -da. Oh no, I've got a bit of a gap here. Hmm. Wonder what happened there. Didn't you say there would be one though? I don't know, I measured something wrong. It's a bit of a gap at the top. But I thought I'm you sorry. said there would be because of something earlier. But not too bad of a gap, just a little bit. But it still works as a box. So um, let's put some boiled insulin on this. Was it because you cut out? <laughs> for Actually, the before groove? we do that, I need to clean this up. What's that? Is it because you cut out for the groove? Do um, that width? I don't know. That's the fun of rushing a project, trying to do it all in one go, as opposed to actually taking the time it needs and detailing it. So I want to actually, actually let's see if it's stiff enough that I can plane it down. So we're going to back up a little bit. Nope, not going to do that. The mirror so said new, and it's almost midnight where I am. He forgot when the time difference. Yes. <laughs> I know. They, we got to hang out with a lot of our European, Asian, African, other side of the world friends. So thanks for joining us. So now we can scrape all these edges. Get things ready for finish. I'm going to scrape onto the board so I'm not getting any tear out on the outside. This one I need to take out a little more. Got this pin, the tail sticking up just a little bit too high. That was the one I had to recut. So all in all, this is a bit of a train wreck. That's the fun of doing things live. You're never quite sure what you're going to get. Um, if I had the time, I might come back in and fill these up. And what I'd do is take all these little chisel off, off cuts that I have. So anytime where I chiseled out the waist and the, the pins, I could cut this into a block and fit it down into that hole. And that would fill it up nicely. Which I might do off camera just for the person who gets this to get a nice piece. Speaking of which, we need to come up with a way to give this away. Um, I know. And I was trying to figure out how to do that. I... I am going to write a number down on a piece of paper, and the first person to guess that number wins it. So I'm going to write this down, and this is a number between 1 and 1,000. First person to guess this number, number between one and a thousand, gets this box. And Sarah may give hints of higher or lower, but uh, yeah. Uh, last thing I need to do is chamfer the edges, so I'm going to grab a block plane and just lightly clean up the edges. Not really chamfering them as much as I'm just breaking the edge without actually breaking it. <laughs> Everyone's guessing 42. <laughs> What's that? Everyone's guessing 42. <laughs> it is not 42. Close, but no potatoes.
All right, if you're on the live, put down a number between one and a thousand. I will give you a hint. It is neither one nor one thousand. <laughs> For the box. Oh, Jean, you were in the hospital. I'm so sorry. I hope you're feeling better. Okay, got it all chamfered. Oh, we need to put a logo on this. Because if I'm giving it away, I'm going to put... You're going to put your wood by right burnish. Brent. There it is. Um, there. So we're going to do some fire. <laughs> we have fire! <laughs> I'm debating if I should give a hint or not. Anyone getting close yet? There's one person who is getting rather close. And he's going about it a very logical way. <laughs> if anyone really knows me, they might be able to guess the number. But you'd have to really know me. Guess I don't really know you because I wouldn't have guessed the number. <laughs> Oh, Jean, I'm so sorry. Oh. And if you want to see this branding iron, I actually have a video showing uh, making it. Almost there. All right, I'll give it another minute and then I'll hey, give here we it a go. hint. Ready and two, one, pop. There we go. You got another hint? I don't know. Why are people zeroing in on something? Some have gotten close. Okay, boiled linseed oil. This is my homemade boiled linseed oil. I thought about making my own and selling it, but oh, that would be a lot of whatnot. But my uh, the finish, uh, the uh, paste wax I'm making will actually have uh, boiled linseed oil in it, the homemade, homemade stuff. Oh, I love the color. Oh, of this. I got it now why you picked that number. Oh, I'm loving how this is coming out. So should I give the hint? Yeah, give me a hint. Look at your keypads. That's all I'm going to say. Look at your keypads. Is it a phone keypad? You know or? James is very oh, logical. In the way he picks things. Mm. And there are patterns. I love how this mahogany just pops out. But you'd be wise to start on the lower end of things. All the patterns are coming out now. I, I'm pretty sure I ha Oh, Ronald White got it. Ronald White? Ronald White. He's the first one I saw. Oh, I just hit my microphone. Sorry, guys. And the number was? 147. So congratulations, Ronald. Send me your, uh, your contact information. And I'm going to do a little bit more detailing off camera to make this a little bit nicer. But... I'm loving how this color is popping out on here. Let's do the inside here. Ooh, nice things I about can uh, smell that. The nice things about making your own is you can just stick your hand in oh, there and go to town. Oh, it's 147. Out. We guessed. So. What's that? I, I'm actually showing them you wrote 147, so oh. I'm not lying. <laughs> no, I didn't actually write it on there because of the keypad. Really? No. Well. That was the pattern I, I, I saw. put 14 on there because it's my birthday. 
And then half of that because I wanted to make it more other than just having it 14. See, Gene is a smart man. He said, we know James uses logic. He picked you. Good job, Gene. Good job. <laughs> All right. So, Mr. White, you need to send us your mailing address, please. So, yeah, if anyone won a T-shirt, um, get that to me with your size. And uh, I will get those in the mail. Asape. I'm really looking forward to putting on the carving because the carving is what really pops out. But this, the color on this, the way it soaks up. Oof. I'm still trying to do the initial calculation for the size of the box. <laughs> yeah, look at that color. Priority. It's still here. I want to see it up close. All right, now we're going to do it on the carving. Yeah, the camera still doesn't do it justice. It's pretty. And I feel like I'm eating. Any last minute questions? Ah, uh, not that I can if see. Anyone has any questions? I'm going to finish wrapping, I'm going to finish coating it, put it in there, show you guys. And then we'll wrap it up. This has been kind of fun, especially since I wasn't able to get the video out this week due to power outage. So being able to do something like this is good. So, so Ronald, I do these occasionally. I want to know what you're going to put in the box. <laughs> so you're going to have to tell us. And there we go. So. Well, I guess we need to know, do you guys want more lives like this on Saturdays? We usually do them on Tuesdays like at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time because Moi has to work during the day. <laughs> cool. Tis party. So now I'm going to let this dry for a few minutes and then add some more, let it soak it up. And then uh, I'll do probably about three coats on that until the wood stops soaking up the boiled lens oil. And when it's all done soaking it up, I'm going to let it, I'm going to wipe off any of the excess and let it sit for a half hour, 45 minutes or so. And then I'm going to come in and wipe on paste wax. And uh, with that, I will wipe it onto the surface, give it a nice clean coat, and I'm going to let it sit for probably an hour or so until the paste wax has a chance to fully um, coat. And then I can come in with a rag and polish off the paste wax, give it a nice clean sheen. So this has been a lot of fun. Maybe we need to do a Saturday live series where we build my bench. That'd be interesting. Build the entire bench live. That would be kind of fun. We may not be married by the end. No. <laughs> <laughs> now we only do projects together when they're a bench. When they're what? A bench. A bench. Like your grandparents' bench. Oh, oh, ah, <laughs> I gotcha. <laughs> cool. Um, am I missing anything else? I think that will about do it. I want to say a huge so. thank you to everyone for joining us. Uh, if you want to see projects like this in the future, let me know. Um, if you want to um, buy any of the, uh, the tools and things I sell on my website, that does really help out the channel. And again, I want to say a huge thank you to patrons on Patreon and everyone who's clicked the join button. Uh, you are literally the reason Wood by Right is still here. So thank Maybe you. Maybe a little shorter. We agree with you. This was a little on the yeah. long side for a live. Oh, uh, yeah. Normally, our children would agree. Yeah, our normal lives are about an hour long. With this one, I wanted to do a full project start to finish. Um, and so our last one was a, a little over two hours. This one's a hair over three. Um, but yeah, kind of fun. Um, did you talk about Hive Mind to join? Oh yeah, yeah. If anyone wants to join the Hive Mind, I if I ever have any ideas or things that I'm kind of bouncing around, I bounce them off that. Um, so if you go to Facebook and type in Wood by Right Hive Mind, um, you'll come across that on there. And so we have a good bit of chat on there and kind of come up with some of the ideas for the projects we're working on. So love to see you on there. Don't forget like, subscribe, share. We like all that stuff. <laughs> we like hanging out with you guys. Thanks for joining us. Yes, this is fun. So I think that'll about do it. Uh, and uh, until next time, have a wonderful day. See you all on Tuesday on the other channel. Bye. Bye. Oh, I gotta find the button. Oh yeah, I'm holding. <laughs>